What's poppin'? Brand new whip just hopped in. Back to the OG intro for now. I want to kind of keep it shorter, not lose you guys' attention by doing a 20 second intro of me just singing. But y'all let me know how you feel about that. But today is going to be a long video because we are going to be rebuilding the Bears for 10 years with Caleb Williams. I'm gay, I'm really gay, I'm super duper gay. With Roma Dunze. I was actually going to try to take like Dallas Turner or Jared Verse or something. But the draft order was really bad. I would have shown you guys the draft, but the main point of this video is just us having Caleb Williams, and it was obvious we were going to take him. Oh, I already skipped the draft recap too, but I was going to show you guys. But but we do have to Caleb Williams. We also got Roma Dunze. And then on defense, we added uh, Chris Braswell. He is only normal dev, but I think he's going to be pretty good for us. He's going to be starting on our D-line. Now, my thoughts on the Bears, they definitely had like, probably the best free agency in the league getting keenan allen for a fourth round pick is insane you signed deandre swift you signed kevin byard i mean this was a great free agency the part that upsets me about it is justin fields came in not supposed to be a starter he was behind um he was behind andy dalton and then he got thrown in and then you know it's the bears the bears aren't very good the bears have a shit team shit coaching staff at the time and it's just you threw him into a bad situation. He obviously didn't perform. He didn't perform the next year. This year, he gets DJ Moore. They have a great connection. Justin Fields goes through some injuries. But they go 7-10 to 10 at the end of the day. There is progress. And then now that Justin Fields is gone, you're going to build this super team. You're going to add Keenan Allen. You're going to add DeAndre Swift. You're going to add Kevin Byard. When you could have built that around Justin Fields and built even more by trading the number one overall pick. I mean, imagine the Bears just traded down one pick and drafted Marvin Harrison and gave the Commanders the number one overall pick, and then you get even more for Justin Fields because you're going to get more picks for trading down. I don't know. Maybe I think Justin Fields is better than he is, but I think it's unfair to him that he never got to play with a team like this, and they're going to give Caleb Williams, this team, his first year as a starter. But let me stop ranting. Let's get this rebuild started. Normally, I like to stick with the team I'm rebuilding's playbook for the first year or so, but... This is going to be a 10-year rebuild, and the Bears' playbooks are just so dog shit. I did a Packers rebuild recently. Their offensive playbook was really good for me, and then in 4-3 defenses, I like to use the Bills. 3-4 defenses in this game are a lot better, but the Bears do happen to have a 4-3. Maybe down the line, we can switch it to a 3-4, which I think would be better for us. But honestly, I just want Caleb Williams to win Offensive Rookie of the Year, get a dev up. He should already have X-Factor now that I say that, but it would still be nice. But I've not done a 10-year rebuild in a long time. This shit's about to take forever. We'll start off this first season, we'll send to the midseason, we'll see how everybody's doing, but since next year, or since this is just Caleb Williams' first year, we're going to send to the midseason to see how he's doing, but I don't know how many times we'll stop at the midseason throughout the video to keep it short. We may just be, you know, going year to year. And before we hop into today's video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe, because this video is about to take forever to put together. It's going to be worth it, I hope you guys enjoy it, but make sure you leave a like and subscribe. It means a lot to me, and comment any videos you guys would like to see next. Holy shit, I almost forgot. We just hit 400 subscribers, by the way. We are literally exactly at 400 at the time I'm recording this. Thank you guys so much. I love you so much. Shout out my boy Brandon the Sit, by the way. He recently shouted me out in his video and subscribed to me. That literally makes me so happy. But let's get this rebuild started. I'll see you guys at the midseason. And we're 3-3 three and three at the midseason. See, so like this is what frustrates me. The Packers have an 81 overall offense. We have an 85. And we're both using the same playbook. And we have one of the worst offenses in the league. And they have one of the best. Let's just whatever dude that's pretty frustrating but Caleb Williams is doing great 1100 yards 11 touchdowns three picks DeAndre Swift is honestly doing kind of bad 3.5 per carry three touchdowns DJ Moore's leading receiver Kenan Allen next Roman Dunze is doing pretty good as a rookie the O-line's actually holding up pretty well Chris Braswell already with two sacks I'd like to see him get some more so we can win defensive rookie of the year and then four signings we have Tevin Jenkins Khalil Herbert Jack Sanborn not too many important names here which is good because we'll be able to hold on to some money but we do want Tevin Jenkins. He's a young interior lineman. And that's probably one of our weakest spots on this team. So we'll give him three years, $43 million. He was looking for better. We'll try to bring him back at the end of the year. We'll consider re-signing Khalil Herbert. We don't really know if we have much use for him as of right now. He is just the backup running back. So not a terrible start, but i definitely like us to be doing better with the team we have. Let's get to the end of the year and hopefully we finish out the year stronger. We actually have a breakout quarterback here in week eight. We'll see if we hit it. If we don't, I'll see you guys at the end of the year. Oh, wait, I think he actually hit it. Holy shit, I mean, he had to break out him forever. Okay, I thought he already had X-Factor. Apparently, he didn't, but let's fucking go. Okay, and we went 11-1 and on the second half of the season. 
finished 13 and 4 and won the division. We only had the 11th offense in points per game, but we had the 5th defense in points per game. We actually, we actually had the worst rushing defense in the league, but our interior D-line is pretty bad, so that does make sense. In Week 18, Caleb Williams had 240 passing yards and 3 touchdowns. If we went 13-4, and four, there's no way we didn't somehow win Offensive Rookie of the Year with Caleb Williams. 3,400 yards, 33 touchdowns, 8 picks. Definitely a great year. Um, he'll probably win Offensive Rookie of the Year unless somebody just had a crazy season. DeAndre Swift finished out the year way better, 1,200 yards, 4 per, four per carry, and 13 touchdowns. Keenan Allen was a leading receiver, 970 yards, 11 touchdowns. DJ Moore also had 970 yards, 6 touchdowns. Gerald Everett was actually pretty involved this year in the offense, 500 yards, 8 touchdowns. Roma Dunze was 2 yards away from 500 with 5 touchdowns. O-line was okay, Darnell Wright was pretty bad, Ryan Bates was pretty bad, but everybody else was pretty good. Braxton Jones was actually really good. Tremaine Edmonds leads the team in tackles with 121, 14 TFLs out of Chris Braswell, 12 out of Andrew Billings, 11 out of Montez Sweat, 10 sacks out of Montez Sweat, 5 out of Chris Braswell. I don't think this is good enough for defensive rookie of the year, but I think he'll definitely be up there. If we got 5 interceptions out of TJ Edwards, he could possibly get a dev up for that. 3 out of Kyler Gordon, 2 out of Jack Sanborn, 2 out of Jaquan Brisker, 1 out of Edmonds, 1 out of Stevenson, 1 out of Byard, 1 out of Johnson, and 1 out of Owens. We got a lot of picks on the year. But Caleb Williams honestly probably got an MVP vote somewhere. Yeah, Caleb Williams ninth for MVP, but it does go to Lamar Jackson. NFC, we actually, did we win Coach of the Year? Nah. NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Saquon Barkley for the Eagles. No Bears. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Michael Parsons. TJ Edwards actually at number eight. That's insane. Offensive Rookie of the Year does go to Kayla Williams. Thank God. That would have sucked if it didn't. Roma Dunze down here at number five. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Jerzon Newton for the Cardinals. They actually went like 0 and they were 0 and 10 at some point in the season. So I don't know what their final record was. Chris Braswell at number three. I didn't expect him to win it, but I am happy to see him up there in the rankings. But here in the wild card round, we're taking on the Minnesota Vikings, a division rival. They finished with the 12th offense in points per game and the 19th defense. So we were technically better in both, but they had a really good passing offense. But honestly, that kind of works out because our passing defense was the better part of our team. Let's go ahead and just sim to the divisional. And let's see if we can beat the Vikings here. Okay. Like, I get that we lost, maybe. But 42-14, to 14, that's just stupid. And it looks like the Vac... Whoa. And it looks like the Vikings actually go on to the Super Bowl. They lose to the Chiefs. That, that playoff game was really frustrating. We should have to re-sign Keenan Allen here, I thought, but whatever. I don't know why he wasn't there at the midseason. Oh, and I actually want to check our dev trades before I get into the re-signings here. Looks like Roma Dunze has Superstar, which is awesome. Caleb Williams is obviously X-Factor. We saw him hit the breakout. No other dev ups on offense. And on defense, TJ Edwards did indeed go up to Superstar. I believe everybody... Oh, Chris Braswell actually did get a dev up. He's up to Star Dev. So, honestly, our edge rushers for right now are perfect. Here in the draft, we're probably going to address D-Tackle and probably the interior line. But first, let's look at these re-signings because I know we missed out on one guy at the midseason. I don't know why Keenan Allen isn't here. I thought he was on the last year of his contract. And when I set the video up, I made sure that I adjusted it, but I guess not. Maybe I did something wrong, but it's whatever. Tevin Jenkins actually is interested now, so I think he'll accept this deal. We'll give him three years, $44 million, and he does take it. I mean, I really don't feel like paying two running backs. I'll give Khalil Herbert a one-year deal to be our backup, which he does not take, but that's fine with me. We don't really need a backup running back that bad. And that's actually going to be all the re-signings we make here. We're going to leave ourselves like $47 million to spend here in free agency. So let's take a look at who's in free agency. Let's see what we can add to this team. Um, All these be the really better players are honestly pretty old. I don't really want to add older players to this team since we're going to be doing this for 10 years. We could go for Jelani Tavai, possibly. We do need another linebacker. I don't think other teams will be that interested in him, and I think he'd be a good kind of like band-aid for that position right now. I'd really only want him for like two years or so. Mm, looks like we're going to have to give him a slightly better offer if we want him. I would be willing to give him three years, and that gets us tied for his top offer. So in free agency, we're going to be going for Jelani Tavai, and we're going to go for Benjamin St. Just as well. We may not get Tavai. We'll probably get St. Just, but let's go ahead and send these offers through. Looks like St. Just has not signed yet. We do not get Tavai. So we'll go for Jordan Brooks instead. Maybe he'll want to sign with us. Probably not. He's not very interested, but we'll go ahead and try. Just Oh, and he actually does sign with us. Hell yeah, and we got Benjamin St. Just. So a couple little depth pieces added to the team. Nothing too crazy. Try not to add too many older players. We're going to be doing this for 10 years, and we're only in the first year. So I don't see much of a point adding older players right now. I guess we did have a good year, and we could add to this team, but I'd rather do more. I'd rather add more through the draft. So going into the draft, I definitely want to address the interior line. Ryan Bates was really bad this uh, previous year. 
Definitely don't need to touch anything else on the offense. Our O-line is pretty young and pretty good. We got two tight ends. We got three good receivers. So for now, we'll leave that alone. We could maybe draft a receiver just because Keenan Allen is getting older. We're going to have to replace him pretty soon. But we could also do that in the upcoming years. And then on defense, I know I want to address D-tackle. That's probably one of the biggest holes on this team. Everything else I would say looks pretty good. So other than interior O-line and D-line, we I don't really know what else we could add other than maybe a receiver to potentially replace Keenan Allen in the future. Okay, and Franklin Foster is actually a round one talent, and he's not projected to go till the third or the fourth round. We'll probably take him in the second so we don't have to, you know, take any chances. But he has elite excel and elite strength. A play rec, B awareness, B block shedding, B power moves, B finesse moves. That's about all you need to show me. So we will be using our second round pick on him. I don't know what we're going to use our first round pick on. Maybe we potentially trade back. But let's go ahead and hop into the draft. The Browns have the number one overall pick this year. I'm not really surprised there. They <laughs> that's, that's about all I got to say about that. I forgot we actually have the Panthers second round pick this year as well. We may go with Calvin Smith. He has elite strength. His skills don't look insane, but the elite strength is kind of what's getting me. I think he'll have hidden dev. He's only 21 years old. We can have him pretty much throughout this whole video. I think we're going to go ahead and take a chance on him. And he does have hidden dev. Only 93 strength. I feel like elite should be like 96 plus, but I'm not going to complain about that too much. Now, here's the thing. We pick early in the second round here. So I think I might trade this back for picks next year. And then we'll use our later second rounder on the D tackle we were looking at. And I think we're going to go ahead and trade this pick away to the commanders. We'll get a second and a third round pick for next year. Oh, that's two years. I'm glad I didn't pick that one. Let's go ahead and trade it with the Raiders. We'll get a second and third rounder for next year. The Eagles were offering us a first in two years. I don't know. The Eagles are normally good in this game. I don't think it'd be a very high value pick, especially because of how down the line it is. So I'm okay with that trade we just made. We're going to have a lot of draft capital for next year, and we're going to be able to take this D tackle here in the second round. We are drafting him early, but we know he's a round one talent, so I don't see why we wouldn't. He's 22 years old, 307 pounds. We saw he had elite excel and elite strength. Core attributes look great. Let's go ahead and take Franklin Foster here. Hidden Dev, 94 strength, 85 excel at 307 pounds. New starting D tackle. That guy's going to be a stud. And there's honestly some pretty decent receivers left. Justin Weatherspoon is 21 out of USC. He has elite strength. He also has good speed, elite jumping. A spec catch, A catch in traffic, A catching, B release. I mean, he looks really good. This guy's a really fucking good physical receiver. He's 232 pounds. He's only 21 years old. Let's go ahead and take a chance on him. He only has normal dev, but when we lose Keenan Allen, we'll have a good replacement. Uh, I wish he had a dev trade, but... I'm not going to complain too much about him not. In the fourth round here, we'll try to take like a center unless there's somebody else on the board who just looks crazy, and then we'll let the CPU take over. I mean, the center that's left, Devontae Ross, looks pretty bad. He's 22 years old. Marginal strength. Yeah, I think I'm good. We're just going to trade it away for the Vikings fourth rounder next year, I guess. We also get a sixth rounder this year that I guess the CPU will have a chance to do something with. I don't really see anything I'm too interested in, and we're setting ourselves up for the future. So let's let the CPU take over, and we'll see how we did in the recap. So Calvin Smith is a 75 overall, probably be good enough to start on our O-line. Franklin Foster is a 76, definitely going to be good enough to start on our D-line. Weatherspoon's also a 76. I don't know how he didn't have hidden dev with the physicals he has at 21 years old. Looks like the CPU also took another receiver that's a 71 overall here in the sixth round. He also has normal dev. Holy shit, the best player in the class was an 85 overall running back who went to the Cardinals. There was an 82 overall safety, and then the rest are 70s and above, or I guess... 79 and below would be a better way to word that we went ahead and released nate davis so that we can start calvin smith on the o-line so this is how the offense is looking weatherspoon's only the fourth receiver i don't think he's going to get much action here but he will probably be keenan allen's replacement whenever we lose him but the offense looks good we didn't really add too much other than calvin smith and then on defense we obviously added foster to the d-line and that's about the really only notable addition and we got more draft picks for the future so that's awesome Go ahead and leave in the comments right now how many Super Bowls you think we are going to win this rebuild. We're one year in, no Super Bowls. We got nine years to go. Go ahead and comment what you think. But let's hop into year number two. I'll see you guys at the midseason. I like how I said we weren't going to go to the midseason every year, and then I did it in the second year anyways. I, whatever, dude. Okay, and we're only two and five at the midseason. Offense looks like it's doing pretty good. Defense looks like it's doing pretty bad. Let's see what players we have to re-sign here. We have 18 players to sign, and we have 136 million. So we definitely have some big names here. We got to start off with Jalen Johnson. Definitely want to bring him back. I'll give him four years, 60 million, and he does take it. DJ Moore is not interested, so I don't think this base offer is going to be enough. I don't want to give him like more than four years, but I will up his money. Four years, 86 million. 
and he does not take it. We'll try to re-sign him at the end of the year. DeAndre Swift is only 26 years old. I'd like him back. Three years, $30 million, and he's excited to stay with the team. TJ Edwards is getting a little bit older. He has been good for us, but I don't really feel like paying him for two more years, especially not for this much. If he takes like one year, $14 million maybe, up the years and I'm back. That's literally the last thing I wanted to do. We'll see if we want to bring him back at the end of the year. Jaquan Brisker, only 26 years old, and he's a high overall safety. We'll give him three years, $32 million. He's happy to resign. Keenan Allen will wait till the end of the year because he'll probably regress. Can someone explain to me why this game wants me to give a 32-year-old receiver a three-year deal? Whatever. Kyler Gordon, I mean, we have a lot of depth at corner, but I don't see why we wouldn't bring him back. Four years, $24 million. Braxton Jones, we want to bring him back. He's been doing great, and he's not interested, so we got to give him a lot of money. Four years, $65 million, and he does take it. We also have Kevin Byer. We'll wait till the end of the year because he could also regress. And then same with Gerald Everett. Same with the rest of these guys. We'll hold off until the end of the year. We'll quickly go over the stats, mainly just because I want to see who the problem is, why we're doing so bad. Caleb Williams is doing good. He's not the problem. DeAndre Swift is doing good. He's not the problem. Receivers are doing pretty good. Is it the O-line maybe? Braxton Jones is doing great, but everybody else is doing pretty good. Is it the defense? I mean, probably. We only have five sacks so far on the year. I don't know what are what are good 4-3 defensive playbooks. I hate running 4-3 defenses. We could try the Cowboys. The Cowboys is just so hit or miss. Like, it only works if you're the Cowboys. But, fuck it. Let's try it. But let's go ahead and get to the end of year two. Let's see how the team finishes off. Hopefully better than this because we're 2-5 and five as of right now. I'll see you guys at the end of the year. We finished the year only 7-10. and 10. Defense didn't start doing much better. I'm thinking we're going to switch to a 3-4 next year. We'll try to make something work. I just can't. I can't do fucking 4-3 defenses. They're so bad. Caleb Williams had a pretty decent year. Not great. He had a way better year last year. DeAndre Swift was good, 1,200 yards, 4.1 per carry, 14 touchdowns. DJ Moore, 1,100 yards, 3 touchdowns. Keenan Allen, pretty much 900 yards, 7 touchdowns. Adunze did pretty good. Everett did pretty good. And our rookie actually got some action. I didn't expect him to get this many targets. Braxton Jones wasn't great. Darnell Wright wasn't great. Mm, the rest of the, the O-line was just pretty bad as a whole. TJ Edwards leads the team in tackles with 115. 15 TFLs out of Franklin Foster. 13 out of Javon Dexter. 11 out of Montez Sweat. Our leading sack... Our sack leader had four and a half sacks. That's just awesome. Four picks out of Jalen Johnson, two out of TJ Edwards, two out of Kevin Byard, two out of Kyler Gordon, one out of Tremaine Edmonds, and one out of Jaquan Brisker. Everybody was just kind of dog shit this year. Okay, and then I see Dak Prescott winning MVP. That's awesome. NFC Offensive Player of the Year also goes to a Cowboy, CeeDee Lamb, no Bears. Defensive Player of the Year also goes to a Cowboy, Micah Parsons, no Bears. Also, by the way, I switched to the Cowboys defensive playbook, and I did my leading... My sack leader had four and a half sacks, and Mike Parsons win defense player of the year. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Oscar Romero for the Cardinals. I believe that's that 85 overall running back we saw. Justin Witherspoon at number five. Defensive rookie of the year goes to Dwight Redman for the Packers. And Franklin Foster at number seven. Of course, defensive rookie of the year had to go to a team in our division. The Bears' number one rival, pretty much. Happy Father's Day to uh, all the Bears fans out there. Go Pack Go. I don't know. Maybe when I saw we were two and five at the midseason, I should have like traded Keenan Allen or something. That probably would have been the play, but it's too late for that now. And the Cowboys go on to lose the Super Bowl to the Jaguars. Nobody retires, so I guess that's good. Nobody got a dev up on offense. Not very surprising. We were pretty bad. And nobody got a dev up on defense. Actually, Kevin Byer went up to X Factor. He's only an 84 overall. We'll try to re-sign him now that he's X Factor, but we'll also probably try to draft his replacement for whenever we do lose him. Let's go ahead and hop into these re-signings and see what we can do. Forgot we didn't get DJ Moore back. Fuck. Let's give him a, a lot of money, I guess. This is going to make the rest of the rebuild pretty annoying, but we'll give him five years, $116 million. And he thinks free agency will be better in the long run. How much is a tag? $36 million. God. I guess let's just try to get him back in free agency. TJ Edwards said up the years, so it's up the years to two twenty nine. He also wants to test out free agency. His tag is going to be really expensive because it's going to think he's an edge rusher. We'll go ahead and pick up the fifth year for Darnell Wright, I guess. Keenan Allen, since we're probably going to lose DJ Moore, it'd be nice to give him an offer, but I really don't want him for three years. We'll give him two years, $34 million. He'd like to play for a new team next year, not too surprised. We're literally about to lose, like, everybody. Kevin Byard, one year, $9.6 million, and he does resign, thank God. But yeah, we're going to have to try to get everybody else back in free agency. Hopefully there, there'll be even better players in free agency, maybe. But yeah, let's go ahead and take a look. We still do have $85 million to spend. Yeah, the top two receivers in free agency are both of our guys. That's unfortunate. I think I'm thinking we're gonna try to bring back DJ Moore, but not Keenan Allen. I really don't 
see us getting Keenan Allen back. I think we could replace him. Oh, the Bucks are trying to fucking take DJ Moore from me, dude. I don't want to give him on a six-year deal, dude. Oh, my God, we're going to lose DJ Moore. Okay, that's unfortunate. Bye-bye, DJ Moore, I guess. Do we just go full rebuild? Like, I mean, I'll try to bring back TJ Edwards. He's interested. I don't think he'll get many other offers. Honestly, not a crazy free agent class. We're just going to try to bring back TJ Edwards, and we're going to try to sign Tyler Algier as our backup. Let's go ahead and send these through. Let's see if either of them want to sign. We do not get TJ Edwards back. We'll probably get Tyler Algier, but he's going to hold out because he's delusional and thinks he's going to get a better offer, which he doesn't. All right, and it's officially a rebuild. We just lost a lot of players. That is unfortunate. Let's get to the draft, and let's see. Hey, at least we traded for a lot of picks this year. So in the draft, we have the 12th overall pick, the 44th, the 57th, the 76th, the 69th, and we have two fourth rounders as well. I guess let's just see what we can do. We got a lot to replace on this team. Let's take a look at the lineup real quick to just make sure we can address all these holes we have on the team. A lot of them. We have no receivers. At least we do still have Roma Dunze. I honestly kind of forgot we have him. We also drafted Van Pran when we drafted Kay Williams. I honestly forgot about that too. So we honestly, I'd be okay with not drafting a center. I think if we just add one receiver, Weatherspoon can develop, Adunze can develop, and then we'll have the third receiver from the draft. And we need a linebacker on defense, probably another D-tackle, but honestly, it's not as bad as I thought it was. So we'll try to draft a linebacker, we'll try to draft a D-tackle, we'll try to draft a backup safety, and we will try to draft a receiver. So let's hop into the draft. Hopefully there will be a good receiver for us to take. Yikes, I just look at the mock draft. It's not looking like there's too many crazy receivers, which is unfortunate, but let's just hop into the draft. Let's see what we can do. We pick at number 12. The Cardinals have the number one overall pick. There is a good linebacker, and we do need a linebacker, but do I want to use my first round pick on a linebacker? Elite agility, elite strength, B man, B play rec, A to C zone, A awareness, A to C finesse moves, A to C power moves, A to C pursue. I mean, he could be really good, but he also could be kind of mid. I don't really feel like using my first round pick on a linebacker. But dude, these receivers are so bad. Wow, I did not expect that to go through. We're trading our first rounder for Malik Neighbors and the Bengals second round pick. So we got a better receiver than we would have been able to with the first rounder. We got an extra second round pick. I think we have like three picks in the second round now. So we're not going to be able to get that linebacker we were looking at at first, but I don't really want to take a linebacker in the first round anyway. But there is a pretty good D-tackle, which I think we could use. Clark McCoy's 21 out of Notre Dame. He has great strength, great speed. B play rec, B power moves, only C block shedding. Oh, I don't like that. There is another good linebacker. Greg Arrington is 21 out of Notre Dame. Elite change of direction, good speed, good strength, great excel. A man coverage, A zone coverage, A awareness. I like this pick. Let's go ahead and take him. Hidden dev, 83 speed, 88 excel. If he's that good at man and zone, that guy should be a high 70 overall. What about Mitchell Austin? 21 out of Alabama. Only solid strength. A power, I guess C to F block shedding. Like, dude, I'm not going to take a D tackle with C to F block shedding. This guy is A block shedding. We can move him to D tackle. He's 22 out of USC. His only good rating is elite strength. A block shedding, A play rec, B awareness, C power moves though. So he's not going to get sacks, but he'll probably stop the run pretty well. I think he's going to have hidden dev, so we're going to go ahead and take him. Fuck! With our last pick in the second round, we may go with Juan Lowry. 21 out of Oregon, good strength, elite agility, good speed, good excel, B zone coverage, B to D man, it doesn't look crazy, what about Andrew Allen, 22 out of USC, he has elite jumping, that's about his only good thing there, but he has A pursuit, B zone, B hit power, which one of these guys should I take, ah, uh, they both look like the same skill level, are they both 21, no, the other guy's 22, Juan Lowry's 21, we're gonna take him, Let's fucking go. He has hidden dev. He's not going to start this year, but when we do lose Kevin Byard, that's going to be our new starting safety. And then now is the point where we're probably just going to be drafting for depth and, you know, potential replacements. We're just going to kind of look for the best player on the board. Honestly, fuck it. Let's go ahead and take Kevin Young. I know we said we weren't going to draft a center. He's 23 years old out of Auburn. He has great strength, elite jumping, elite excel. A run block finesse, A lead block, B pass block, A pass block finesse, A stamina, A impact blocking, A awareness. He looks really good, so we're going to take him. And he has hidden dev, he has 90 strength, I think that's a good pick. Then we're going to trade this pick away for the Vikings third next year. We'll also get another 6 this year and a 6th and 7th next year, fuck it. And then we'll let the CPU take over from here, we'll get to the draft recap and we'll see how we did. The one thing I'll say about getting Malik Neighbors is we're going to have to pay him and Roma Dunze in the same year, which is going to suck, but I think we'll be alright. 
Greg Arrington is a 73 overall. Pete Nicholson was actually a 73 overall at the end. I moved him to D-tackle. He went up to 76. Juan Lowry is only a 74, but he'll probably develop and get some morale by the time he's a starter. Kevin Young's a 73. The CPU took a blocking tight end here in the fourth round. This guy probably has hidden dev, which he does. You don't really need a tight end, though. But they also took a 72 left guard. The rest of the picks were really kind of nobodies. And honestly, this wasn't a crazy draft class. Not a single player, 80 overall or above. So here is the roster going into year number three. Definitely not the best we've looked, but I'd say we're getting younger, which I think is going to be better because we still have eight years to go. Still got DeAndre Swift. We got him a good backup. We have a really young receiving core that should all be able to develop. We have a pretty young O-line as well. I didn't realize that we lost Gerald Everett, but I guess we did need a tight end. And then we're going to make sure we start Nicholson as, as our second D tackle. I want him to get as many stats as he can. And then we need to make sure we move Jordan Brooks to outside linebacker. And then we got Kevin Byard's future replacement. We look good at corner. We could look good on D-line. We could use a couple better D-linemen. If one of these guys could have a you know, higher depth rate than Star, that would be great. You know, We need somebody to get a breakout so they can develop more. But, God, should I, should I switch to a 3-4? Nah, I, we don't have the team to switch to a 3-4. We have a 4-3 team. It's just 3-4 defenses are so bad. Maybe if we go with the Cowboys defense the whole year, it'll be better. I don't know. So we're going to try out Green Bay and Dallas one more time. If not, we'll just be lame and go to the Chiefs playbook or something. But for year number three, we're going to go ahead and get straight to the end of the season. I'll see you guys there. Hopefully we're in the playoffs. We're going to have to find out. I'll make all of our re-signings at the midseason that I need to. But yeah, let's, let's just see how this goes. And we end up finishing the year eight and nine. The offense was actually the problem this year. The defense did pretty good. So maybe we'll be good sticking with the Cowboys defense. Looks like we're going to have to change the offense playbook, though, even though the Packers dropped 35 on us in Week 18 with the same playbook. Caleb Williams with 3,400 passing yards, 27 touchdowns, 9 picks, 7, 67 completion percentage. DeAndre Swift, 1,300 yards, 4.7 per carry, 6 touchdowns. Tyler Algier got 12 touchdowns as the backup. Malik Neighbors was the leading receiver, 940 yards, 6 touchdowns. Roma Dunze, 840 yards, 9 touchdowns. Tyler Scott, why is Tyler Scott whatever? Who the fuck is that guy? Who the fuck that? And the O-line was really bad. Kevin Young was really bad. This is awesome. Tremaine Edmonds leads the team in tackles with 149. That might be a dev up. 24 TFLs out of Franklin Foster. Maybe he'll get a dev up for that. 19 out of Montez Sweat. 17 out of Braswell. 10 out of Tremaine Edmonds. Five and a half sacks out of Foster. Five out of Sweat. Four out of Nicholson. Three out of Braswell. Five picks out of Jalen Johnson. Three out of Edmonds. Three out of Brooks. Three out of St. Just. Two out of Brisker. One out of Arrington. And one out of Byard. MVP goes to Dak Prescott. Maybe we should just use the fucking Cowboys offensive playbook. NFC Offensive Player of the Year also goes to Dak Prescott. CeeDee Lamb in second. Pretty much tells me what I need to do. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Aiden Hutchinson. I actually don't see that happen very much. That's awesome. Did we have anybody on... No, we didn't have anybody in the running for any of these awards. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Kareem Knight for the Falcons. No Bears. Actually, I lied. Barry Richardson at number 9. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Paul Woodley for the Commanders. And Pete Nicholson in number 7. I actually didn't make any re-signings at the midseason because it was all older players or, you know, people I wasn't even able to bring back at the time. So let's get to the offseason. Let's check for dev traits and let's re-sign the players we need to. Looks like the Packers win the Super Bowl over the Colts. We did not get any dev ups on offense, unfortunately. And on defense, Edmonds did go up to Superstar, which I expected. And Foster also went up to Superstar, which I think I also expected. There are some nasty D tackles coming into the draft. We did just draft Pete Nicholson. But there are some nasty D-tackles. Like, oh my god, it's insane. So we're probably going to be drafting a D-tackle this year. Try to vamp out this D-line. And I don't think we'll be switching to a 3-4 just because our defense actually did pretty good this year. I guess we'll test it out. If we get to year 5 and, we, and defense isn't doing much better, we'll try to switch it to a 3-4. But that's going to take moving all of our D-ends to outside linebacker. You know, shit like that. It's just annoying. But actually, if we draft another D-tackle this year, we'll have three good down three four linemen so we'll just have to see what we want to do but first let's get these re-signings out of the way Caleb Williams we have the fifth year for him 48 million I mean he's probably going to ask for about this much anyways we may as well go ahead and pick it up we have the fifth year for Malik Neighbors as well 23 they're both 23.9 million damn we're gonna have to pay Caleb Malik Neighbors and Roman Dunze in the same year assuming we pick up all these fifth years I'm thinking Let's pick up Malik Neighbors. We won't pick up Roma Dunze. We'll have to pay him next year. I want to bring back Tremaine Edmonds. I don't want you for four years, bro. We'll give him three years, 48. And he does take it. Three years for that old of a linebacker. That's crazy. 
We'll try to bring back Tyreek Stevenson. If we can't get him back, it's not the... Actually, we have so much depth at corner. We don't even need to bring back Tyreek Stevenson. We'll bring back St. Just, though. Uh, one year, 4.9 million. He's happy to resign. And then we'll try to get Kevin Byer back for one more year, I guess. One year, 7.5 million. He's also happy to resign. And that's about everybody we need to bring back here. So we're going to have 77 million to spend in free agency. Let's see. Dude, hopefully there's some big names. I, I need it. Show it to me. Ooh, I mean, Sam Laporta... I don't think we can afford him, though, because he's not even interested. It's really not anybody that I'm interested in. I actually think I am going to go for Broderick Jones. Our tackles haven't been playing very great, and he's a really young tackle that I think we could use. He's probably going to go to the Rams. We may as well give him an offer. And he finally signs, and he did go to the Rams, unfortunate. But it's not like we needed him that bad anyway. So another quiet free agency. There's just not much. I don't want to sign all these old-ass players in positions. We already have somebody who's decent and young, if that makes sense. So we'll just have to wait till there's some names. And plus, we're going to have to re-sign some big names in these upcoming years. So it'd be nice to hold on to our money while we can. But yeah, look at all these D-tackles. Top five talent D-tackle. Top five talent D-tackle. Where's the other guy? There was another one. Round one talent D-tackle. Like, there's just a bunch of crazy D-tackles. This guy has a B in three A's, a B in three A's, two B's, two A's, a C in three A's. Like, Let's take a look at these guys and figure out who we want to trade up for, because I want one of these guys really bad. Matt Martin's 22 out of Oklahoma. Great strength, elite speed, elite change of direction, elite agility, great acceleration. A awareness, A play rec, A power moves, B block shedding, B pursuit, A finesse. Oh my god, his only thing that is an A or B is a stamina. Chester Silver is 22 out of Oregon State. Elite excel, agility, change of direction, speed, and great strength. A awareness, A play rec, A power moves, B block shedding, A finesse. These guys are like pretty much the exact same. I honestly like Chester Silver more. Let's take a look at where Chester Silver is supposed to go. And we're going to trade up to there. I don't care how much it takes. You know what? Chester Silver actually isn't supposed to go until pick number... F oh, wait. Yeah, Chester Silver is projected to go second overall. Guess let's just see if we can trade up with the Cardinals. The Cardinals have been bad every single year of this rebuild. So I'm sure they'd love some more draft picks. So we are able to move up to two. It did cost our first from next year, a second and third from this year, and obviously our other first from this year. But I think I think it's going to be worth it. This guy looks too good to pass up on. So let's go ahead and get into the draft, and let's take this D-tackle. And Matt Martin did indeed go first overall, but I wanted the other guy more, to be honest. So let's go ahead and take him. I'm really excited for this guy. Chester Silver, welcome to the Bears. Hidden Dev, 90 strength, 80 speed, 86 excel. He's actually... He's only 295 pounds. I mean, obviously, that's that's massive. But for a D-tackle, that's not insanely big. But who cares, dude? He looks like a fucking unit. <clears throat> and then our next pick is obviously going to be in the third round here. We had two third rounders, by the way. That's why we still have a third round pick here. And I do not know what I want to take, if I'm being honest. I may take Dexter Hutchinson. He's 22 out of West Virginia. Only decent strength. Yikes. Ooh, yeah. We, I don't want him. <laughs> what about Joey Mc... I'm not even going to try to say that. He has great strength. Yeah, this guy looks better. Not going to look too much into it. I kind of want to take a tackle because of how bad our tackles have been playing. Hidden Dev 89 strength sounds good to me. And then the CPU has like a bunch of fourths, fifths, sixths, and sevenths to use. So maybe they can do something good with them. Let's get to the end of the draft. Let's get to the end of the draft here. And let's see how it goes. Come on, show me 80 plus overall. Please show it to me. Holy shit. We got the highest overall player in the class. We got an 84 overall D tackle round one pick two. Our new tackle is a 73 overall. The CPU took a 76 overall middle linebacker. He's only normal, but I think that's actually a pretty good pick by them. They did pretty bad in the rest of the picks, but I mean, it's pretty late in the, in the draft. But we just got the highest overall player in the class at an 84 overall. Matt Martin was an 83, so either one would have been a good pick. There's an 81 corner, an 81 safety, another 80 safety. Oh my god, dude. Holy shit. He's got to have X factor, right? But here's what we're going to do. We're going to sim to the next week. I'm going to mess with the defense. I'm going to turn this defense into a 3-4 because this is uh, this is not cutting it. We're going to run the Raiders playbook. Sick. My game froze. Let's go. Yay. Oh, my God. I love my life. Every day I wake up feeling so fly. Look in the mirror. I'm a really fly guy. Yeah. I'm a really fly guy. And bam, the defense has been fixed. We are now a 3-4. I think this is going to be much better because that was fucking... That was not good. Why is... Oh, okay, never mind. I'm the problem. Oh, wait, no. I didn't... Okay, why is... Okay, maybe I just need to press generate best lineup. There we go. Braswell's up to the to the linebacker. 
So we got a 3-4 now. We got three good 3-4 D linemen. We move Montez Sweat and Braswell to linebacker so they can be our edge rushers. I think this is going to be much better. We're going to go Las Vegas defense, Cowboys offense. And yeah, hopefully that's the move. But we have an 87 overall team going into year number four. If we're not a playoff team, I don't know what, like, I don't know how that would happen. I probably punch my monitor 10 times. I don't even know what to scout anymore. I mean, Montez Sweat's getting kind of old. We could probably get some edge rushers. Let's go ahead and hop into year number four. I'll see you guys at the end of the year. Hopefully, we're actually in the playoffs this time. Bam, and we finished the year 11-6. and six. We win the division, and we are in the playoffs. We had the ninth offensive points per game, the eighth defense. I think we finally found our uh, playbook, scheme, combo thing. But Caleb Williams threw for 4,200 yards, 27 touchdowns, only four picks, 69 completion percentage. Really good year out of him. DeAndre Swift, 1,000 yards, 4.1 per carry, 9 touchdowns. Algier had 13 as the backup. Roma Dunze with 1,400 yards, 6 touchdowns. We re-signed him at the midseason. Weatherspoon with 900 yards, 9 touchdowns. Malik Neighbors, 800 yards, 4 touchdowns. Cole Komet was actually pretty good as well. Darnell Wright, we actually also re-signed, I believe, at the midseason. He was not, or he was okay, I guess. The rest of the O-line, I mean, the O-line's just been like mid every year. Not like terrible, but not good. 114 tackles out of Tremaine Edmonds leads the team. 13 TFLs out of Chester Silver. As a rookie, he also had 10 sacks. 12 TFLs out of Foster. 10 out of Sweat. 10 out of Nicholson. 11 and a half sacks out of Montez Sweat. 10 out of Silver. 7 out of Braswell. 5 out of Foster. 3 picks out of Edmonds. 2 out of Kyler Gordon. 2 out of Jalen Johnson. 1 out of Jordan Brooks. And 1 out of Jaquan Brisker. MVP goes to Lamar Jackson. Caleb Williams is nowhere. He didn't have any touchdowns. Oh, I'm an idiot. He came in sixth place. NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Jalen Hurts. Saquon Barkley at number two for the Eagles. Kayla Williams came in eighth. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Michael Parsons. That's like his third time winning it. Montez Sweat at number seven. And I this guy's name is Stars. What's his name? Like Dick Ass. I don't know. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Ronald Dunbar for the Giants. No Bears. And did we win Defensive Rookie of the Year? No. We actually came in third place with those numbers that's crazy goes to demarcus wallace for the commander second place was somebody in our division of course yeah we came in third with chester silver but he i didn't check his depth tree yet he may already have an x factor so if he does it's not like that matters too much let's actually go ahead and look at that now i didn't even realize before that the cpu took us a hidden dev quarterback in the draft but yeah silver does already have x factor he's also already a 92 overall so him not winning defensive rookie of the year is not a big deal whatsoever but we have a wild card game here against the eagles we have the same overall team. They have the best offensive point per game this year, the 11th defense. We both have pretty good teams. Our passing defense was really bad. Our passing offense was really good. So I think we have a chance to win this game. And we have home field advantage. But let's go ahead and sim to the divisional. And let's see if we can beat the Eagles. And we unfortunately lose. So we are four years into the video. And we have not won a playoff game yet. That's great. Will you worry about the wrong thing? You need to worry about where your bitch going when the whole lead. And the Falcons beat the Chargers in the Super Bowl. Damn, I was hoping they had Big Kirko, but they got Kareem Knight. I guess it is four years in the future. Nobody retires. Let's check the dev traits. Let's see if anybody got a dev up. Who had a good year? Didn't uh, Malik Neighbors have a good year? Maybe he went up to X Factor. No, we actually got no dev ups on offense, unfortunately. But this tackle we took last year in the draft has superstar, so that's awesome. Caleb Williams is up to a 96 overall and 99 with morale. And I want to say no dev ups on... Actually, Foster, did he have superstar? I think he did already have superstar. I'm tweaking. But yeah, no, no dev ups this year, unfortunately, but we still look really good, honestly. Montez Sweat is down to an 82 overall, 83 with morale. Arrington's a pass coverage linebacker, so it's not even really like he can replace him. He'll probably be our future Tremaine Edmonds replacement. Ah, oh, God. So we're probably going to let go of Montez Sweat, try to draft a different edge rusher this year. Damn, that's unfortunate. Is this the year we don't have a first round pick, too? I think it is. Because I do believe it is Montez Sweat contract year. I only made a couple re signings at the midseason. I think I re signed. Uh, I don't even remember. Shit, I don't even know. Like, I can't even tell you that. Like, you know, like, if I, I don't know. Like, never know, you know, like. This has been recorded in segments, so don't remember everything. I do know we have Montez Sweat, though. That's about all I can remember. We have the fifth year for Calvin Smith. Seven million is not bad at all. We'll pick that up. Chris Braswell is our starting edge rusher. We definitely want to bring him back. He didn't accept our last offer, so we'll give him four years, 25 million. And he does take it. Cole Komet, we may as well, well bring him back. I don't think we'll get much better than this as of right now. I really shouldn't have given him four years, but it's too late now. Algier's actually been a great backup. I would like to bring him back. I don't like paying two running backs, but if he takes two years, $10 million, I wouldn't hate that. He doesn't want to test out free agency, though. Benjamin St. Just will bring him back for another year. One year, $3.2 And then I think we're going to let go of Montez Sweat. 
If there's nobody better in free agency, I'll consider bringing him back. But a three-year deal for a 31 overall 82 edge rusher, I think I'm good off that. We could honestly let go of Jordan Brooks. We have that other linebacker that we could start over him. So we'll probably let him go as well. I want to bring back Bayard. This is so cheap. I, I may as well bring him back, honestly. If he wants to keep playing, we'll let him play. And our other safety will keep uh, developing. And then by the time he's the starter, he'll be just as high of an overall as Kevin Byard. Kevin Byard honestly, may be a lower overall than him up to this point. But let's look at free agency. Hopefully, there's a good edge rusher here to make our lives easier. <laughs> Dak Prescott, okay. I don't think there's a single edge rusher. These free agency classes have been dog shit. We could go for BJ Ojolari. You know, just in case we're not able to get somebody better in the draft. How's he been doing so far? I mean, only three and a half sacks and four TFLs last year. How many snaps did he play? Oh, it doesn't show that here? That's stupid. I mean, it can't hurt to pick him up, honestly. Is there anybody better? Keem Davis Gaither. Uh, should we go for Matt Judon? Kind of be a Band-Aid replacement because he's already 36, but he only wants three million. I think this might be the play. He's not going to be that good. But I think he's going to be better than Ojolari, and we'll have him for one year, and then he'll go, and we can try to draft somebody to replace him next year. Damn, Xavier Worthy's in free agency. Ooh. Honestly, there's not much I'm interested in this year, so we are going to go for Matt Judon. We're going to go for Trey Benson to be our new backup running back, and then we're going to try to get Xavier Worthy. He'll probably go to the Falcons, but I just think it'd be cool to pick him up. I don't know why Xavier Worthy has normal dev. I feel like that's kind of insane. An athlete this good and talented you know just pure athlete not just solely based on football should definitely have hidden dev but let's go ahead and send these offers through let's see if these guys want to sign with us looks like everybody signs we didn't get xavier worthy but we got matt judon we got trey benson so we'll start matt judon this year unless we somehow get like a crazy edge rusher in the draft which i think is unlikely because we don't even have a first round pick which is why we are getting matt judon because he's just going to be you know a one-year band-aid type of situation because realistically ojalari would have been the better pick but i don't think he's very good in this game Matt Judon used to be really good in Madden, but I don't really know how he is anymore. So in the draft, I don't even really think we need anything on offense. We have Malik Neighbors and Roma Dunze, and we still have Weatherspoon, who's an 82 overall. I wouldn't hate drafting one more receiver, just in case we could get somebody who could potentially be better than Weatherspoon and, you know, have a dev trait. But the O-line's good, tight end's good, running back's good, quarterback's obviously good. Um, we need to make sure we move Arrington to middle linebacker. I guess I could just do it right here. There we go. That's how this is supposed to look. So on defense, honestly, we really don't need much on defense either. Lowry will probably be a starter next year. We'll have a new starting edge rusher next year because Matt Judon's not going to be here for long. I don't know what we're going to do in the draft. I mean, we'll try to take an edge rusher, but maybe we try to trade up into the first round if there's somebody that looks good just because we really need that position and it's not like we need much else. Okay, there's actually two really good edge rushers here. They're both round one to two talents. Peter Milstead is 22 out of Oklahoma. He has elite excel and elite speed with good strength. A awareness, B block shedding, A finesse moves, C power moves though. I kind of like the other guy more. Peter Milstead does have elite speed and excel, don't get me wrong. But Steven Seidman has elite strength, good speed, great excel. A power moves, B finesse moves, A awareness, A block shedding, B play rec. He also has B man coverage for whatever reason. So I think we're going to try to trade up with the Panthers. I'm just scared he's going to get... Maybe we trade up with the Rams in case one of them does get taken. But I think we're going to try to trade up into the first round and get an edge rusher here. All right, trading up into the first round is not as easy as I thought. We would have to give up a lot of capital, and I want to you know, keep this rebuild. You know, not make it harder on ourselves for the future. So we're just going to have to hope we can get somebody in the second round here. We're not going to get somebody as good as either of those guys. They both looked really good, but I'm just I'm not, I'm not able to get up to a spot to pick them so we're just gonna have to hope somebody else that's good falls to us i guess there's some decent edge rushers but the best looking player that i think i want is gonna be leonel collins 21 years old out of auburn elite agility elite change of direction elite jumping a man coverage b press b zone coverage b to d play rec b to d awareness i think this is our best bet we're gonna go ahead and take him and try to get one of those power rushers here in the third round and he has hidden dev, 91 speed, 91 excel. He's 6 foot 2, 95 change of direction. I think that's a good pick. We have depth at corner, but you know we could always use another one. And if he has a dev trait, that's going to be really big for us. So let's hope that one of those linebackers are still here in the third round. They were third to fourth round projections. And I think they're both still here, which is perfect. Thurman Candidate is 23 years old. He has great strength and B power moves. Miles Denny's 22 years old. Elite excel, good strength. He looks a lot worse. I think we're going to go with Thurman Candidate. He's not going to be very good. He 
He also may have normal dev, but it's just going to be nice to have a potential replacement for Matt Judon. He does have normal dev. He also has 66 change of direction. He actually looks like he's pretty terrible, so I don't know. We are, what, in the third round? Ooh, that was kind of a bad value pick, honestly. We'll see if we can get somebody good in the fourth round here, and then we'll let the CPU take over. The best player on the board honestly looks like Manny Neal, 22 out of Kentucky. He has great strength. It can't hurt to add depth to the O-line. He's probably going to have normal, but we're going to take a chance on him. Normal dead, but he has 90 strength. He also looks like he is honestly pretty bad. But let's let the CPU take over. Let's get to the draft recap. I think we had a pretty bad draft, to be honest, but I think the corner is going to be good, and I think it's going to save our draft here. I'm just glad we got Mad Judon because we were not able to get one of those edge rushers. And yeah, I told you, both of these guys were pretty terrible. At least Collins is good. He's a 77 overall, 21-year-old corner. CPU took a 75 overall running back as well. So maybe we didn't need to sign a backup in free agency, but we did anyway, so it's not like it matters much. I want to see what we missed out on. What overall were those edge rushers? Peter Milstead was a 75. They were both 75s. I knew they looked really similar. Milstead only as normal, so I would have been really annoyed if I drafted him. What about the guy the Panthers got? Hey, I think Sidemen was the guy I said I liked more, and he had hidden. But, I mean, we weren't able to get any of them, so no point in dwelling on the past. Sometimes I say things, and I'm just like, dude, am I gay and I don't know it? Like... But here's how the roster looks going into year five. Offense still looks great. We still have a McLintray, McIntray. I, I don't even know how you would say that in case we end up losing one of these old linemen and he has superstar. But the offense is pretty much the same going into this year. I'm hoping Adunze and Malik Neighbors could continue to develop so we can have a really good receiver duo out of them. And Weatherspoon's honestly pretty good himself. And then on defense, Collins is going to be the fourth corner. I want to start him at slot corner. Over St. Just, I think that's probably the best move. Who is this guy? Did I draft this guy? Who is that? Who the fuck is that guy? We have way too many corners. I didn't know we had a superstar corner somewhere. But we'll have him be the backup slot corner, I guess. Interesting. I did. I don't think I drafted him. That was probably a CPU pick. Holy shit. But we still have a good team going into this year. I believe we have an 88 overall. Oh, it said 88 before we sim. Now it's an 86, whatever. Still a good team, nonetheless. We made the playoffs last year. I think we can make the playoffs again. We're still yet to win a playoff game, so it'd be nice if we could do that. I think our scout is as edge rusher, which is probably what we need now still, so we'll probably just leave it as the same. Yeah, DN outside linebacker. And we'll actually have a first-round pick this year. It would have been nice to get one of those guys, honestly. But let's go ahead and get to the midseason. Or, yeah, let's just... What do we want to do? Let's just get to the end of the year. I don't want this video to be two hours. I'll see you guys at the end of the season, and hopefully we're in the playoffs. I know we said we were getting to the end of the year. This is all I'm going to show because I wanted to make sure I showed you guys me re-signing Caleb Williams. We're giving him six years, $313 million, and he does re-sign. And we finished the year 12-5. and five. We didn't win the division, but we are in the playoffs. We have the second offense of points per game. We actually have the number one defense in points per game this year. Caleb Williams was seventh in the league in passing yards with 4,100. 38 touchdowns, five picks, 73 completion percentage. He had a really good year. DeAndre Swift, 1,300 yards, 4.3 per carry, 19 touchdowns. He may go up to X-Factor for this, which kind of sucks because I haven't re-signed him yet because he turned me down twice, but can't complain about this good of a year. Roma Dunze, 1,200 yards, 12 touchdowns. Hopefully he'll go up to X-Factor for this. Weatherspoon with 900 yards, 12 touchdowns. He may get a dev up, and he's only normal, so that'd be huge. Malik Neighbors, 800 yards, 6 touchdowns. Cole Komet, almost 800 yards, 8 touchdowns. We actually spread the ball around really well. Darnell Wright was pretty bad. We Maybe we need to move on from him. He's been kind of consistently mid. I'd say the rest of the O-line was pretty good, though. Greg Arrington led the team in tackles with 115. 16 TFLs out of Chester Silver. 14 out of Foster. 13 out of Braswell. 11 out of Judon. 11 and a half sacks out of Matt Judon. Holy shit, I'm glad we got him. 10 and a half out of Silver. 7 and a half out of Foster. 6 out of Braswell. 4 out of Nicholson. 2 picks out of Edmonds. 2 out of Johnson. 1 out of Collins, Brisker, Byard, and Gordon. We had a really good year. Holy shit. MVP goes to Lamar Jackson. We came in third with Caleb Williams. NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Bijan Robinson, Caleb Williams at number 8, DeAndre Swift at number 9. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Kobe Turner for the Rams, Chester Silver at number 9. I believe he's a second year, which is insane. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to George Grubbs for the Saints, no Bears. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Steven Seidman, who I wanted to draft. That's unfortunate. Leona Collins at number 5, though. But we have to take on the Eagles again here in the wild card. They beat us last year. We had a better offensive points per game. We had a way better defense. Dude, if we have this kind of an offense and we're going against the 28th defense in points per game and we somehow manage to lose, I'm going to be really frustrated. So let's go ahead and sim to the divisional and let's see if the game can just give me one playoff win. 
Thank God. We win 28-20 to over the Eagles. We're going against the Packers. We're going against our number one rival. They had the best offense in the league. We had the best defense in the league and the second best offense. So this should actually be a really good game. DeAndre Swift had 168 rushing yards, three touchdowns. Holy fuck. Let's see. We have a playoff rival scenario. Let's go ahead and click on this. Hard-hitting brawl. Chess match. Let's go plus hit power. Fuck it. We also have a hot opponent scenario, which is not something you'd like to see. Let's go... Let's not insult opponent. Let's go be confident. But the Packers are really good in sim. I've been seeing them do really good recently. If you saw my Packers rebuild, you know why I would be scared. This should be a really good game, though. If we get blown out or something, I'll be frustrated. If we lose by a little bit, I would understand. Let's sim to the NFC Championship here. Let's see what happens. And we actually beat the Packers in the division. We make it to the NFC Championship against the Seahawks, who only had the 18th offense and points per game. They did have the number four defense. But we definitely have a better team here than the Seahawks, so I believe we should win this game. Holy fuck, we gained plus 10 break, tackle, play rec, and tackle for the next game for beating the Packers. Okay, we should win. But yeah, let's go ahead and sim to the Super Bowl. I th I personally believe we should beat the Seahawks here, so we probably won't. But let's just sim to the Super Bowl and let's see what happens. And we've made it to our first Super Bowl in year 5. Let's fucking go. And DeAndre Swift and Weatherspoon both did not get a dev up. Neither of them did. Cole Komet actually got it. I mean, he had a good year, but I didn't expect it to go to him of all people. And Matt Judon went up to X-Factor. Tremaine Edmonds went up to X-Factor. Matt Judon, literally, I just wanted you for one year. Why'd you have to do so good? If he doesn't retire, we gotta bring him back, right? He'll probably retire, though. I think we're gonna hop into this game. We're gonna play a little bit. We're going against the Ravens. It's, I think it said they had a 91 overall team. Jesus Christ. But yeah, let's hop in and let's at least play one drive. And then we'll watch the rest of the game sim out. The Ravens definitely have a better team than us, but we have more heart. Okay. What did I just say earlier about not saying things that are gay? But let's see what Swift can do here. Caleb Williams is wearing number 11. That's interesting. Honestly, they're kind of... You're just going to press my boy Roma Dunze like that? You not watch his college highlights? I'm just going to chuck it up to him. Go up, Adunze. Dude, I told you. I told you. Did you not watch his college highlights? Do you, do you not know what you're doing, Ravens? Like, you're really going to leave Roma Dunze, of all people, one-on-one? -on -one? Are you are you insane? I don't think this stretch is going to work here. They're pretty much in the same defense, but let's fucking try it. Oh, I think we could get this edge. And then I juke inside after saying I could get the edge. I think if I would have just kept going, we could have had more yards there. But honestly, I'm not going to complain about a seven-yard gain. I mean, Adunze looks like he's one-on-one -on -one again, but they do have a safety over the top. So let's just hand this off to Swift. Let's try to pick up this first down. There we go. All right, let's be a man. Let's fucking throw the ball. I want to hit Swift, but I don't want to make a bad decision. So if Komet's open in the flat, I may just hit him. Oh, Swift is there. He's there. That's a fucking touchdown. Let's go. We're on the board early with a touchdown. Make the PAT. The Ravens go down and kick a field goal to make it 7-3. to three. We get down the field and score another touchdown and take an 11-point lead. We also get a stop on defense. We get down the field again, get another touchdown to go up 21-3. to three. The Ravens finally answer with a touchdown. They cut the lead to 11, and they turn us over. Or actually, I think that was halftime, but they kick a field goal. It's now an eight-point game, and we score literally instantly and get a stop on defense. It's 28-13. to 13. They get a stop and get the ball back and score. It's 28-20, to 20, and they get another stop, a touchdown, and a two-point conversion to tie it up. And we get stopped, but we get to stop ourselves, and we're getting down the field. It's now an overtime. If we score, we win the game. Can we get down the field? We get a stop. Did we not just score? I swear we scored. Okay, well, we lost by three. How did we lose? I swear, like, the thing was in the end zone. Am I tweaking? Whatever, bro. That should count as a Super Bowl win. I don't care. Hey, we made it to the Super Bowl. We competed. We were up, like, 21 to 3, though. Did we really just choke that, bro? Damn, that's unfortunate. Oh, did Matt Judon retire? I mean, he should. He, like, realistically, he should. No, but Kevin Byer did finally retire. I'm glad we have his replacement. But that means we got an X-Factor Matt Judon for one more year. We'll still probably draft an edge rusher. Um, if Matt Judon's better, we'll start him. If the other guys are higher overall, we'll start the uh, the rookie. But we do still have some re-signings to make. I haven't re-signed Swift yet. I think there's a couple other players we're missing. Damn, dude, I wanted to win that so bad. How did we choke a 21-3 lead? Like, I want to play... I'm going to play the clip right now again where the red line was, like, in the end zone. And I literally thought we won the Super Bowl and I was ready to start celebrating. But that was not the case. DeAndre Swift is already 30. He wants a three-year deal. He didn't accept this last offer, so I'm just going to up his bonus by one grand or 100 grand. And yeah, he takes it, whatever. Fuck this game. Uh, we're not going to bring back Moni. We have too many corners, honestly. 
Or actually, maybe we bring back him and let St. Gius go. That's probably the play. And he doesn't want much money anyway. We'll give him one year, $3.3 million, and he's excited to stay with the team. Weatherspoon, I'm thinking we let him go and see who's in free agency, and then we'll bring him back there if there's nobody better. We don't need Garrison Evans. I don't think we need any of the rest of these guys. Other than Matt Judon, we may as well bring him back if it's going to be this cheap. Um, that's going to make it easier deciding if we want another edge rusher or not. But let's get into free agency. I'm hoping there will be a really nice receiver. Fuck, I just clicked on Phil Staff. But I'm hoping there will be a nice receiver. If not, we'll bring back Weatherspoon. He's been great for us anyway. But I'm hoping there's like a nice stud receiver. Even if he's old, I'll fucking take him. We just made the Super Bowl and we need to make this team better so we can get that Super Bowl win. Okay, Christian McCaffrey is here. We don't need that. We could go for Karloftis. Our third D lineman isn't crazy, but he wants $14 million per year. How's he been doing? He got two and a half sacks and four TFLs last year. Yeah, I'm good. And he had a half a sack the year before. It's not looking like there's any receivers, though. I mean, Rashard Green would be better than Weatherspoon. So maybe we just go ahead and sign him instead. How much does he want? Three years, 31? I'd be willing to pay that. And that gets us in his top offers. I don't know why he would have red interest for a team that just won the Super Bowl. But that's going to be the only offer we make. Hopefully he takes it. I'm actually going to probably up his money just a little bit. So he wants to sign with us. Let's go ahead and send this through. Do you want to play for us, Richard Green? No, you do not. I guess let's just try to bring back Weatherspoon. We may as well. We made it to the Super Bowl with him. And we're his only offer. So let's go ahead and send this through. And he signs with us. So we got our receiver back. I really wanted Richard Green, but it's whatever. Let's get to the draft and let's see what we want to do here. God, I can't believe we lost that Super Bowl. I'm actually so upset. Like, I'm not even, like, mad. I'm just, like, in distraught because I, I, was, I was so happy because I swore I thought we won. We were winning 21-3 to and we lost. Oh, my God. Like, what a choke job, dude. So, going into the draft, again, I don't really think we need to touch offense. Maybe add some receiver depth, possibly, if there's any decent receivers. And then I'm definitely going to draft a... Uh, did Underwood lose it? Or did we... Oh, okay. It's just... This game's just bad. Okay, one second. So, yeah, we need to draft a new edge rusher. He'll probably be a higher overall than Matt Judon, but after that season he had, I may have to start him. Lowry's going to get his first starting year. He hasn't gotten a start yet. And look at all these corners we have. Jesus Christ. But, yeah, maybe we could replace Nicholson. I mean, somebody with a dev trait would be nice down here. But other than that, other than edge and possibly D-line, I really don't know what we're going to draft, so... And we have a super late pick. We may have to trade up again. Okay, Randy Teal is a round one talent. He's 22 out of Tennessee. Elite Excel, elite speed, elite jumping, great strength. A finesse moves. Uh, he doesn't look crazy, but he, he's a round one talent. Yeah, I guess let's just try to trade up with the Patriots. This should be pretty doable. And we need an edge rusher bad. If he's a round one talent, like, he doesn't look crazy, but it's telling us he's a round one talent, so we know he has to be pretty decent. And we're only moving up, like, nine spots, so this should be pretty doable. So we're getting up our first and third from this year, our fourth from this year and next year, and a fifth from 30 and 31, and we're moving up to the Patriots pick to get that edge rusher. If we did all that and this guy doesn't have a hidden dev, I'm going to be pretty frustrated, but let's just, let's see what happens. I It wasn't Trey Palmer, was it? Because if it, no, I think his last name was like Neil or something. Oh no, he got taken. Awesome. Um, So we have to decide which one of these guys, honestly, Tony Shields looks pretty good though, so this may be a good thing. He is 23 years old. Great strength, good speed, great excel, beef and S moves, A power. This guy honestly looks better. His physicals weren't crazy, but his core attributes are great. Chris Aikens, 22 out of California. Good strength, great speed, great excel, A finesse moves, B to D, B to C power moves. I like Tony Shields more. He is 23, so he may have normal, but he looks really good, so we're going to take him. God damn it, dude. I love when I like base what I'm going to do off the mock draft and it just straight up lies to me. I've complained about this before. Like I know mock drafts in real life aren't, you know, to a T of what the real draft is going to be. But this is also a computer based video game. So if you're going to make one thing in your game accurate, why would it be that? I like Gabe Ward, 22 out of Notre Dame, good strength, great speed, A spec catch, B spin move, B break tackle, B deep route. I think we could use some depth at receiver, and if he has hidden, it'd be a really good pick. He's also six foot five, so let's take a chance on him. Hidden Dev, 93 speed, 89 Excel, six foot five. We may start him over Weatherspoon just for the dev trait, depending on his overall. Our next pick isn't until the fifth round, so we'll go ahead and send this out. Let the CPU take over. We'll see how we did in the draft recap. The Panthers just signed Jadavian Clowney for a two-year $20 million deal. Why? That's literally 
<laughs> the top comment I saw right after I said that is just why with a crying emoji. But for real though, why? Like, dude, the Panthers, the Panthers need to learn that they need to rebuild, honestly. Like, whatever. I guess, I guess, no, I don't get it. I, I was going to try to justify it. You're signing an old ass edge rusher when you don't have a team that's competing. Tony Shields is a 73, so he's not even higher overall than Judon, so he's not going to start. Gabe Ward's a 73. We may start him. I honestly don't know. Probably not. I don't know. I don't know if I can do that. The best player in the class was an 82 overall. There were two 82 overall safeties, actually. An 80 overall running back, an 80 overall D tackle, and the rest are all below 80 overalls. Actually, yeah, let me check what overall the guy I was supposed to get was. He was a 77 overall hit and dev. Are you fucking kidding me, bro? I hate this game so bad. It literally shaves years off my life, dude. Oh my god. The one thing you know how to make accurate in your fucking game is that mock drafts aren't accurate to the real draft. God, dude. Fuck yay. Like we could have had a new starting edge rusher already, but now we just gotta go with Judon again. I'm in a dilemma. Should I start Ward over Weatherspoon? It's a pretty big overall difference. Nine overalls. I just feel like Ward could get to a higher overall than Weatherspoon could sooner just because of his dev trait. Ugh, I don't know. But here's how the offense looks. Pretty much the exact same. And then defense... It can it stop doing this dude bro why mm. there we go should we move big b up in the depth chart he has superstar shit i can make him the slot corner yeah let's do that and then let's just make ward the slot receiver so that he gets some love i need to adjust these specialists in a second but i'll do that in a bit oh this game is oh let's just let's not complain it's okay all right the rebuild's been going good you just made it to the super bowl let's just make it again and let's win it this time even 89 overall team going into this year yeah it's time for year six so you guys at the end of the year hopefully we're in the playoffs again and then year six we go 10 and 7 we actually came third in the division but we're in the playoffs and that's all that matters we had the ninth offensive points per game the 13th defense Caleb Williams was fourth in the NFL with passing yards with 4,200 33 touchdowns six picks really nice completion percentage DeAndre Swift, 1,100 yards, 4.4 per carry, 3 touchdowns. Our backup running back had 11 touchdowns. Roma Dunze, 1,400 yards, 11 touchdowns. Please go up to X-Factor for this. Our rookie actually did really good. 800 yards, 10 touchdowns. I'm glad we started him, honestly. Malik Neighbors, 800 yards, 5 touchdowns. Cole Komet, 700 yards, 4 touchdowns. Yeah, it might be time to move on a tackle. Actually, it was Braxton Jones this time. It's been Darnell Wright every other time, but... Oh my god, Tevin Jenkins was so bad. I was going to resign him at the midseason. I was like, damn, that's a lot of money. Glad I didn't do it. Tremaine Edmonds leads the team in tackles with 129. 17 TFLs out of Chester Silver. This is the best player I've ever drafted. 14 out of Matt Judon, 12 out of uh, Braswell, 12 out of Foster. 17 sacks out of Chester Silver from D tackle. 11 out of Braswell, 7 out of Judon, 3.5 out of Foster. 3 picks out of Brisker, 3 out of Gordon, 1 out of Judon, 1 out of Lowry. Why is Judon getting an interception? But 17 TFLs and 17 sacks has to be defensive player of the year we actually came in second for mvp i was not expecting us to be this high up we actually lost to drake may which is pretty interesting nfc offensive player of the year went to josh jacobs on the packers we came in fourth with uh caleb williams we also came in ninth with roma dunze defensive player of the year did go to chester silver he, he literally deserved it nobody else could have done as good as he did chris braswell also came in 10th place offensive rookie of the year did go to gabe ward so he's gonna get a dev up from whatever he is right now so i'm glad we drafted him and i'm glad we started him Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Eric Grayson for the Commanders. No Bears. But we made the Super Bowl last year. We have a wild card game here against the Lions. They had the 11th offensive points per game, the 5th defense. They had a better record. But we do have a higher overall team. They have home field advantage. It's really up for grabs. Let's just sim to the divisional. Let's see what happens here. And we win 35-17 to over the Lions. Thank God. But we have to go against the Falcons this week. We're at 90 overall. Went 13-4. and Had the 2nd offensive points per game in the 10th defense. Dear God. Arrington and nine tackles and a pick last week. I hope you can do that again, dude, because we got a hard game coming up. Let's go ahead and send to the NFC Championship. Let's see if we can beat the Falcons here. We'll probably lose, and I'll be fine with it, though. Okay, 31-13, to 13, that's a little much. We did not need to lose by that much, whatever. Six years in, no Super Bowls. That's great. That's awesome. And the Falcons actually go on to win the Super Bowl against the Colts. I think that's our second Super Bowl win so far. Bruh. Matt Judon still hasn't retired. We're not bringing him back. Like, he's going to be like 69 overall X-Factor. Dude, this is... I just want to win a Super Bowl. Is that so much to ask for? But we actually have a decent amount of re-signings left. I didn't bring back everyone at the midseason because I wanted to see how everybody did first. So I know we have Tremaine Edmonds. I want to bring him back. He has X-Factor. We have the fifth year for Chester Silver. 
He's a 97 overall and he's not interested, so I am going to pick this up even though it's expensive. Tremaine Edmonds, 88 overall X-Factor linebacker. I'll give you two years, 27 million. He's excited to stay with the team. Greg Arrington, I'd also like to have you back. He didn't accept the last offer. We'll up it just a little bit. Three years, 22.8 million. He'd like to play for a new team next year. How much is a tag? Oh, yeah, we're not doing that. Trey Benson was our backup. We don't need to bring him back. Barry Richardson's also a backup. We don't need to bring him back. Kyler Gordon, we just have so many corners. And he's already 30 years old. Let's not bring him back. Let's hold on to this money. We'll bring back Kevin Young. Two years, 14 million is very affordable. He takes it. Nate Bryant, we'll go ahead and bring him back as well. One year, three million. And then since we didn't bring back Kyler Gordon, we will bring back Silas Money. Or I guess it'd be Money. Why am I saying Money? That's such a tough name, and I've been fucking saying it wrong the whole time. Braxton Jones. We actually have a replacement for Braxton Jones, and I don't feel like paying him that much. He's only an 84 overall. I think we could replace Pete Nicholson if we can't. If there's nobody good in free agency, we'll try to bring him back. Tevin Jenkins was terrible. We're not going to bring him back. So I think that's going to be all of our re-signings. Thank you, Matt Judon, for your one year of greatness. We made it to the Super Bowl mainly because of you, but I can't bring you back at this age. Well, I guess we'll bring back our kicker and punter. But we still have some money left to spend in free agency. Let's see if we can get a new lineman, and let's see if we can get a new O-lineman because I was talking about D-lineman. But let's see who's here. Javon Holland, we don't need. Tyson Campbell, we don't need. Mark Andrews, we don't need. Leo Chanel. Yeah, we don't need Leo Chanel. Um, I mean, we do kind of need an off-ball linebacker, but I don't feel like paying him $22 million a year. Colton Miller, we do need another tackle. I think we lost both of ours, but one year, $21 million. God, I just don't want to do that. I think we are going to go for Christian Barmore. I think it'd be a good replacement from Nicholson. I think he'll do better. And then I think we're going to try to get address the O-line in the draft. Let me see how big of holes we have on O-line, because we may have lost both of our tackles. We may have just lost one, because I know we have one that had Superstar that we drafted a couple years ago. Yeah, we still have Darnell Wright. We actually had a replacement for everybody we lost, so we don't even need to worry about the O-line. That's actually... Okay, thank God. So we're trying to sign a D-lineman. We'll draft a new edge rusher because there's none I'm interested in free agency, and that's about all we need to address. If we can get this D-lineman, I think we'll be set. Oh, I forgot to check our dev traits because our receiver won Offensive Rookie of the Year. Yeah, he went up to Superstar. Let's fucking go. Fuck you, Weatherspoon. I should have let you go. Oh, you know you love it if you let it go. Ooh, we also need a new middle linebacker. I kind of forgot about that, but we still have Underwood. He could always start for us. And, we, dude, there's so many good off-ball linebackers in the draft, so let's not worry about that too much because there was a good off-ball linebacker in free agency, but I'm not trying to spend all that money. We're going to need it for the future. So let's see if we can get Christian Barmore here. We're his only offer, so he's going to sign with us. So that addresses our hole in the D-line. We're going to try to draft a linebacker and draft an edge rusher, and then I think we'll pretty much be set. And once again, all of the good edge rushers are projected to go in the top five. That's just great. But Miles Pippen isn't projected to go till 32, and he's around one to two talent. He just doesn't look that good. I don't think there's anybody worth like trading up for because Will Manning's projected to go at 28. He looks pretty good. So we'll just keep our pick where it is because I don't want to lose draft capital because I think we already gave up like a second or third from this year when we traded up last year. I could be wrong. But yeah, let's get into the draft. We really need an edge rusher this year. So Adrian Freeman is 23 out of Wisconsin, elite strength, everything else looks pretty bad, but he has A power moves, B finesse moves, B awareness, B block shedding. He looks good, he's just 23 years old and it scares me. Miles Pippen is only 21 and he's around 1-2 to two talent, elite jumping, great speed, good strength, good excel, A finesse moves, B power or D power moves, A pursuit, A awareness, B block shedding, ugh. What about Will Manning? 23 out of Notre Dame. Great strength. Ugh, I'm in such a dilemma. It's between Pippen and Freeman. Freeman looks better, but Pippen's around 1 to 2 talent as a 21-year-old. But Adrian Freeman just looks so much better. I really want Adrian Freeman, but I think he's going to have normal dev, and then I'm going to be pissed off because I feel like Miles Pippen has a good chance of being hidden. I, I got to take Freeman. Please have hidden. Please. Let's go. He actually doesn't look that crazy based off those stats, which kind of scares me, but he has hidden dev, and that's all I care about, if I'm being honest. Dude, I was so nervous. I know I yapped a lot about trying to pick between those picks, but now we need an off-ball linebacker. Let's see if we can get one. There's always nasty off-ball linebackers. Andrew Bacon, 21 out of Notre Dame. He actually looks kind of dog shit. Like, look at these two run-stopper linebackers. Keyshawn McLeod, 23 out of Auburn. Elite speed. B zone, B to D, B to C man, A injury, A play wreck, A catching, B block shedding, B awareness, B hit power. And then TJ Childers, 
22 out of Louisville. Elite speed, elite change of direction. A play rec, A zone, A tackle, A pursue, B hit power. I kind of like Childers. He is a day three guy, so maybe we trade our second round pick away for one next year and we draft that guy in the third round. That's probably our best bet. And the Bills are actually offering us a second and third for next year. So we're going to go ahead and take that and then we'll draft that linebacker here in the third round. All right, Childers, it's all on you to have Hidden Dev. It's all on you. Can you come through for me, please? All right, moment of truth. Damn, that's unfortunate. If he's a good enough overall, we can maybe start him. We already have like an 80 overall middle linebacker alongside Tremaine Edmonds, so we'll have to see. Oh, I thought he was going to have a hidden. That sucks. At least the edge rusher has hidden. As He looked like he might be like a 71 overall, but he has hidden Dev, so if we could win him defensive rookie of the year, that'd be awesome. Yeah, Freeman's a 73 overall. Childers is only a 73 middle linebacker. Not the best draft, if I'm being honest. But we got some new picks for next year. The best player is an 82 overall running back. There's actually an 80 overall middle linebacker. That would have been sick, but I don't really like drafting linebackers in the first round. Or I guess I technically did, but you know what I mean. I drafted an edge rusher. So here's the offense going into year number seven. The O-line looks a little different, but still looks good all around. We kind of need a backup tight end. I may go sign one out of free agency, but we got three good receivers. I didn't even realize Roma Dunze finally went up to X-Factor. Thank God. I can't believe I didn't acknowledge that. And then we got to make sure we start Freeman at our other edge rusher. I'd say we look pretty good, honestly. We added Barmore to the D-line. We just we need everybody to perform the way they should, and we should be good. I'll see you guys at the end of year number seven. By the way, we still haven't won a Super Bowl, but I'll see you guys there. Hopefully, we're in the playoffs this time, or again. <laughs> And we finished year number seven. Let me think. Yeah, we made the Super Bowl year five. We lost last year. We finished year seven, 11 and six. We won the division and we're in the playoffs against the Packers. They had the fifth offense in points per game, the number one defense. We had the 11th offense and the fourth defense. Caleb Williams was seventh in the league in passing yards with 4,000. He had 26 touchdowns, only three picks with a 70 completion percentage. DeAndre Swift, 1,100 yards, 4.2 per carry with 14 touchdowns. What a good year from him. Roma Dunze, 1,200 yards, 7 touchdowns. Malik Neighbors, 900 yards, 3 touchdowns. Gabe Ward, 700 yards, 7 touchdowns. Cole Komet, almost 500 yards, 2 touchdowns. I actually didn't re-sign Darnell Wright at the midseason because it was expensive, and I'm glad I didn't. We're going to replace him this upcoming year because he's just been pretty dog shit. Everybody else is actually pretty good, though. Tremaine Edmonds leads the team in tackles with 120. 20 TFLs out of Chester Silver, 15 out of Braswell, 12 out of Freeman, 9 out of Underwood. 14 and a half sacks out of Chester Silver, 10 out of Braswell, 7 out of Foster, 6 and a half out of Freeman. I'm pretty sure Chester Silver's probably the best player of all time. Like, he's going to go down as the GOAT. Two picks out of Juan Lowry, one out of Tremaine Edmonds, one out of Gigsby, one out of Big B. Can I not read? One out of uh, Collins and one out of Cam Johnson. Caleb Williams had a good year. He probably won't win MVP, but he'll be up here somewhere. It goes to Jalen Hurts. Caleb Williams at number six. NFC Offensive Player of the Year also goes to Jalen Hurts. No Bears. Actually, Caleb Williams in 10th place. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Mike Parsons. We actually came in 3rd place with Chester Silvers. We also came in ninth with Chris Braswell. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Donovan Stevens for the Commanders. I swear they've run, won like a lot of Rookie of the Years. 10th place goes to Matthew Atkins. I don't even know who that is. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Javier Phillips for the Lions. Of course, we get cucked by somebody in our division. Has to happen at least once a video. It actually hasn't happened yet, but... You know, it happened here, so fuck me, I guess. I want to take a better look at what Adrian Phillips did, though, because I didn't pay that much attention because I was just kind of going through it real fast. Did I read his name wrong or something? Am I stupid? Adrian Freeman. Six and a half sacks, 12 TFLs. Actually a pretty good year, but I can see why he didn't win Defensive Rookie of the Year. But we have a wild card game against the Packers. I'm pretty sure we played them in the playoffs already. I don't really remember what happened. But we have a playoff rival. Or we beat them last time because I remember we got hella stats from it. But we have a playoff rivals. Let's go chess match this time. Defensive players on both teams will have plus five play rec, beat the Packers, and advance to the next round of the playoffs. Well, that's the plan, because I'd like to get at least one Super Bowl. Let's sim to the divisional. Let's see if we can beat the Packers here. Just please, game. Pretty sure we had a higher overall team. We had home field advantage, and we just we just lose. Like, there's no reason we should have lost. We just do. Like, the Panthers win the Super Bowl before we do. That's awesome. We don't lose anybody to retirement. Jair Alexander retires, though. Pack is back. <laughs> you heard it. But we do have a few re-signings that I missed out on. We only have 11 million to spend, so I don't even know who we're going to bring back here because it'd be nice to have money in free agency. But we've had really quiet free agencies pretty much every year because it's just been players we really don't need. So let's see who we want to bring back here. Darnell Wright, we're going to let go, honestly. He just wasn't very good for us throughout this video. 
Should we bring back money? He only wants $3 million this year. We may as well. We could use him at corner. We'll let go of our backup quarterback. We could use Nick Underwood, but I just don't want to give him that money. Christian Barmore, I feel like we can replace in the draft. So that's going to be everybody we bring back. We'll look at free agency. If there's good players, we'll restructure some deals and try to sign somebody. But we're going to have to see. We need a new tackle. We need a new D-lineman. We need a new middle linebacker. Let's see who is available. Wow, Patrick Mahomes. I mean, we could go for Nick Bosa, but I don't really feel like playing him as a 3-4 D-lineman. I think it'd be a good addition, but we could also go for Ivan Pace instead. I think that'd be an even better move. Or Justin Matabuike would be a good move. He also only wants $13 million compared to Ivan Pace wanting $23 million a year. So I think we're going to try to... Ooh, and Josh Allen. We did just get a new edge rusher, though. I think we're going to try to free up some money and get Matabuike. The only sh contract we were really able to restructure was Caleb Williams, but that gives us $25 million a year, so that should be enough to bring back Matabuike, or to, to sign Matabuike. And plus, I don't want to restructure too many deals and fuck ourselves over in the future because we do still have to pay our D-tackle that we have. And I kind of I wonder if we could get Matabuike for two years and cheaper just because there's not many teams interested in him. And it's still a green offer, so let's go ahead and send this through to him. He should sign, which he does. So now we have a really good D-line. And it's going to make addressing these needs we have in the draft even easier. Yeah, you know my ass is super fat. I ain't lying. So in the draft, we definitely need a new tackle. Uh, Nothing else really on offense other than maybe a backup tight end, but we could get that way late in the draft. I want to get a new middle linebacker. Freeman went up to superstar? Did he have that? Braswell also went up to superstar. Holy shit. How did I not check these things? He just got a dev trait increase Super Bowl week it doesn't even say why he didn't win defensive rookie of the year but not going to complain about that at all this defense is nasty once we add another middle linebacker we'll be pretty much set okay that okay okay so first round we take a tackle second round we take a middle linebacker let's see what we can do all the good tackles are projected to go pretty early unfortunately do we trade up since we don't need that much this year I kind of want either Sexton or Payne Matthew Sexton is 23 years old though only good strength. Is there somebody with like elite strength? Because that's something I would be interested in. There's also Swanson. Let's look at Damon Payne. 23 out of Miami. Only solid strength. Everything else looked really good though. What about Swanson? Tw they're all 23. What is up with this? Is there anybody that's not 23 years old? What about Seymour? 22. Nobody has like elite strength though. They are tackles, which is like less likely out of a tackle. So I guess let's just trade up for... Let's just trade up to eight just because the mock draft lies a lot. It's going to take a lot to get up there, but we don't have many needs this year anyways. I think it was the commanders we need to trade up with. Maybe they even have a linebacker we could trade for as well. So we're giving up our one, two, and four for the eighth overall pick and a superstar middle linebacker, which would have been hard to hit on in the draft. So that's actually huge. So now we can get a tackle that we want and every need on the team will pretty much be addressed. And we have multiple third rounders as well to, you know, add depth throughout the team. But let's see what tackle is available for us here at pick number eight. I didn't even look at this guy. Maxwell Crawford, 22 out of Oklahoma State. Only decent strength. Yeah, no wonder I didn't. He looks so bad. Who were the, were the guys that I was looking at? Were they right tackles? Damon Payne, Sexton. Yeah, these are the guys I was looking at. Matthew Sexton has good strength. A, pass block finesse. Only C to F, pass block power. But I think this is probably my favorite guy available. So we're going to take Matthew Sexton here. Hidden dev, 88 strength. That's our new starting tackle. And then I don't even know what we're going to do with the rest of these picks. I wonder, would it be dumb to just trade like a, the rest of our picks for this year for a first rounder for next year? I think that might be a good idea. So we're trading a second and two thirds from this year for a first and fourth in the next year's draft. So our next pick now is not until the sixth round. They might say five. I don't know. It's kind of blurry for my screen. But let's just get to the end of the draft. We're only going to make one pick this year. We're going to have more picks next year. So let's see what overall the tackle we got is. And he's a 75 overall. Definitely not bad. This is going to be year 8, which means we have 3 more. We have 8, 9, and 10. Oh, God, dude. I just, want a, I just want one Super Bowl, dude. We've already made one. Can we just win one, please? I probably should have gotten a backup tight end, but I don't think it's going to matter too much. But here's the offense going into this year. Caleb Williams is a hard 99 overall. We probably need a new running back soon. DeAndre Swift is regressing a lot. And the CPU actually took us a backup hidden dev tight end, so that's perfect. We're going to need a running back soon. We'll address that later. But defense looks really good. We got a lot of dev traits. Our D-line is amazing. Our edge rushers are good. Corners are good. But it's time to hop into year 8. It could be year 9, but I'm pretty sure it's year 8. Let's just call it that. I'll see you guys at the end of the year. Hopefully, we're in the playoffs. I mean, we've been in the playoffs a lot more than, you know, how we started the video. But 
I just want to win a Super Bowl. That's literally all I want. I could give a fuck about making the playoffs. See you guys at the end of the year. Let's fucking go. We finish year eight, 12 and five. We got the one seed and the bye. Kayla Williams threw for 285 passing yards, four touchdowns in the final week of the season. Don't know why I was like lagging trying to say that. But Kayla Williams led the league in passing yards this year with 4,800. He also had 37 touchdowns, only five picks with a 71 completion percentage. He also rushed for 500 yards. DeAndre Swift, 1,000 yards, 3.8 per carry, seven touchdowns. Our backup running back had 13 touchdowns. Roma Dunze, 1,500 yards, eight touchdowns. Gabe Ward, 1,100 yards, 13 touchdowns. Malik Neighbors, 1,000 yards, seven touchdowns. Three 1,000-yard receivers. Cole Komet, 600 yards, four touchdowns. The O-line actually wasn't terrible. Like, probably about 20 sacks allowed on the year with our lowest overall O-line so far. Jose Lacely led the team in tackles with 118. 14 TFLs out of Chris Braswell. 14 out of Chester Silver. We actually re-signed him at the midseason. We gave him a fat bag. 14 out of Matt Abuike. 13 and a half sacks out of Silver. 11 out of Braswell. 8 out of Freeman. 3 out of Matt Abuike. 4 picks out of Edmonds. 3 out of Lacely. 2 out of Jalen Johnson. Did we win MVP? Come on. Kayla Williams wins his first MVP of the video. Thank God. NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to B. John Robinson. We came in third place with Kayla Williams. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Aiden Hutchinson. We came in sixth place with Chester Silver and ninth with Chris Braswell. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to the Commanders again for Wendell Johnson. We came in fifth place with Christian Hernan, Herndon. I guess that's our backup tight end. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Reggie Sharper for the Saints. No Bears. But, hey, we got our first one seed of the video can we get our first fucking Super Bowl? We also got our first MVP of the video. Can this please just be the year? Please. Just don't don't show me a good team. The Saints. Okay, this should be doable. They have the 22nd offensive points per game in the 6th defense. We're four overalls higher than them. Can we please just win this game? We're at home. They only went 9-8, and eight, and we win 36-10. to 10. We kind of destroyed them. We're taking on the Panthers here. Bryce Young's a 96 overall X Factor. But they have the 22nd offense. Didn't the other team just have? Whatever. 22nd offensive points per game, the 6th defense. Let's check this weekly award real quick. Caleb Williams, 260 passing yards, three touchdowns. Come on, please just get me to the Super Bowl, please. Let's get to the Super Bowl. Let's see if we beat the Panthers. Come on. Oh, thank fucking God. We're in the Super Bowl against the Bengals, who are four overalls higher than. They have the 16th offensive points per game, 17th defense. Let's look at the lineup real quick before we hop into the Super Bowl. No dev ups on off. Oh, Ward actually went up to X Factor. We have three nasty receivers now. And then I want to say all the dev trades are the same on defense. It's kind of hard to tell when you have this many, honestly. We're just so good. This team is stacked. Can we please fucking get a Super Bowl here? Let's hop in. I don't... Oh, shit. Didn't mean to press manage team. Should we just relocate for the fucking Super Bowl? That'd be kind of badass. Where should we go? Let's fucking go to Toronto, Canada. That'd be awesome. We'll just stay as the Bears, though. Sure, we're now the Toronto Bears. Let's hop into the Super Bowl. I don't know if I'm going to play a drive or not. We'll, we'll have to see, honestly. It just depends on how it's going. We're so much better than the Bengals. Realistically, I shouldn't have to play a drive. We should just win. Hopefully, that's the case. Let's see what happens here. We get a stop on defense early, and we get down and score a touchdown to take a 7-point lead. We get another stop, and we get down the field and kick a field goal. We take a 10-point lead and get another stop on defense. They do finally get a stop, though, but we get another stop. They stop us again, and then it's halftime, and we get the ball back. We drive down the field, and we get nothing. But we get another stop. Our defense is playing really good. Offense goes down the field and scores a touchdown to go up by 17. But the Bengals get on the board finally with a field goal. Let's just not choke another Super Bowl. Oh, it looks like we're choking another Super Bowl. Let's hop in and use a bunch of clock on this drive because I'm not I'm not going to sit here and watch my team lose another Super Bowl. Let's run the ball. Let's use some clock. I kind of want to chuck it up to Roma Dunze, but they got a lot of abilities. On. Dude, like every single player on their defense has an ability. Oh, my God. What am I supposed to do? Did you guys see that? I'm about to, why is Caleb Williams wearing number 22? Look at this. Three linemen with an ability, a linebacker, and all their DBs. Whatever. Let's try to get this to the outside. There you go, Swift. There you go, Swift. Stay in bounds. That's huge. That's huge. That might have just won us the game there. We're going to use some more clock by doing so. Let's just keep it on the ground. Let's give this one to Tyler Cook. Come on. Let's just use some clock. Let's get... Stay in bounds. Cut up field. I didn't read those blocks very well, but I'll take two yards. This is so winnable. I, I just know if I wouldn't have hopped in and played this drive that we would have choked, so I'm not going to take the chance. Wasn't Caleb Williams number 11 when we played the last Super Bowl, though? Let's see if we can get this stretch going. Oh, yeah. Skirt! And that's a first down. That I want to say that pretty much seals it. We're in field goal range. I'm still not going to give it to the CPU because we know how that would go. Let's give this one to Swift. Or actually, let's take this to the warning. All right, Swift, get us a first down. 
And it's pretty much over. Should I just be a fucking man and chuck it up to a Dunze? Yeah, fuck it. Oh, yeah, he burnt the fuck out of his man. That's a tud. GG's. GG's. I know I'm lame by not scoring the touchdown. I honestly, I was going to say it's smarter not to, but I genuinely was trying to score, if I'm being honest. But whatever, let's just punch it in with Swift. Sorry, to, dude, all of my, whatever. A Dunze, Neighbors, and Caleb Williams are all number 22. Dude! Let's fucking go. That's, that's, that's victory formation. I mean, obviously, we, what am I, dude, am I an idiot? Whatever, we just won the Super Bowl. I'm not going to play the sweet victory SpongeBob clip because I got copyrighted last time, so I'm going to go ahead and sing it for you. Sweet, sweet, sweet victory. Yeah. And it took us eight fucking years to win a Super Bowl, but it was with Caleb Williams. So maybe the Bears are going to make the right decision by drafting Caleb, but I don't think they're going to wait eight years for a Super Bowl, honestly. But let's fucking go. We got the Super Bowl we wanted. And we still got two more years. Let's hit a little three-peat. And DeAndre Swift did retire after that Super Bowl. I did focus scout running back, though, so hopefully we can replace him. Did Kayla Williams win Super Bowl MVP, though? That is the question. No, it was Chester Silver. Honestly, I, I'm fine with that, dude. I'm telling you, he's the fucking GOAT. Best football player to ever play. Ever. Like, in the whole fucking world. Well, well duh. Tom Brady who? Aaron Donald who? Lawrence Taylor who? Chester Silver is the fucking GOAT. By the way, I paid like 10 of our best players at the midseason, and we still have all these players left to resign. So this is going to get scary. I may have to restructure some deals here. All right, we restructured some deals. I think we cleared up like maybe 20 million. We got 52 million to spend now. So we freed up like 30 million. So let's bring back Juan Lowry. Three years, 34 million. He takes it. Jose Leasley, we'll go ahead and bring him back as well. Two years, 5 million. He's coming back. Jalen Johnson, one year. Let's give him two so we can try to just keep him around till the rest of the video. Two years, 30 million, and he takes it. Silas Money will give him one year, 3.3 .3 million. Welcome back. I should have given him two years as well, but Kevin Young, we want to bring him back. Two years, 19 million. He's excited to stay with the team. Nate Bryant will bring him back as well. One year, three and a half million. And then we'll let Weatherspoon go. We need to bring back Cole Komet. Can we even afford it? We cannot. Uh, What's the play? Should we... Oh, we still have to bring back Tremaine Edmonds. Okay, we can actually afford this, though. One year, 7.2. He takes it. Now, what do I do? I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> I guess we're just going to have to... I don't know. We're going to have to fuck around and find out. Sometimes some money will magically free up when you send to free agency. Let's see if that is the case. Yeah, we have 13 million. What the fuck? Whatever. Let's bring back Cole Komet. Is there a running back anywhere? Hey, there is one right here. Lamar... J okay, that's not funny. Ooh, Jonathan Taylor. Okay. Yeah, let's restructure more deals. We just resigned a bunch of players, so it should be doable. Let's restructure some more contracts, and then let's sign Jonathan Taylor. Let's bring back Cole Komet. This is going to make our money situation a little scary these upcoming years. I think we already restructured Braswell. Yeah. Why is he white now? I don't even know if I even just freed up like any money. I maybe freed up like $5 million. Yeah, not even. We have $17 million to spend, but I want Jonathan Taylor. I want him. Give them to me. Two years, 23 million. That should be enough. We may be like one of his only offers. Looks like the Colts want him back. Can we afford to bring back Cole Komet though? He wants 9 million a year. Damn. Who can we afford to get? We can afford this guy, Will Herbert. Fuck, I just actually withdraw the offer. God damn it. Will Herbert is a blocking tight end though. That's the problem. However, we can just barely afford to go for Trevor Bradley. He looks a lot better, so we'll try to go for him instead. Let's go ahead and send these offers through. Please, Jonathan Taylor, we just won the Super Bowl. Thank you. And then we're still Trevor Bradley's only offer. He should sign eventually. He's holding out as if he's going to get another offer. Yeah, thank you for finally doing it. I'm glad you waited three times. But yeah, now we got two first-round picks to add even more to this team. So let's see what we can do. I mean, we're probably just going to try to find the best players available with every pick just, you know, to add depth to this team. But we added Jonathan Taylor. Ward is up to X Factor. We'll probably just add some depth to the O-line in the draft. It does suck we lost Cole Komet, but I don't think it's going to matter too much in the long run. Every tight end plays good in this game. Dude, what do we even draft? Uh, We don't technically have a strong safety. Big B is a corner. So maybe we try to draft a safety. That'll probably be the play. And then the rest of the picks will just go based off talent, not position. Let's hop into the draft here. We have two first rounders. And the Bills actually have the eighth overall. Or wait, who do we trade it to? Who do we trade... For their first round. I don't even know. Let's just make our pick. Is there a good safety? There's a top five talent running back. 
there are good safeties, but they're not. Dude, I think I might just take the running back. Like, we literally don't need him. We just got Jonathan Taylor, but top five talent. Well, I kind of wish I wouldn't have gotten Jonathan Taylor now. Fuck it. Top five talent, I'll take you. Hidden Dev, 92 speed, 92 excel, 5'11", 200 pounds. I'll take it. New backup running back. Our backup running back throughout this video has been getting a lot of touches anyway, so it's not like it can hurt to take him. And then let's try to find a safety here with this pick. Brian Lewis, 22 out of Missouri. Great strength. A stamina, B play rec, B man, A to C awareness, A to C block shedding. Lance Kelly doesn't look great. He actually looks pretty bad. Jalen Shavers has elite agility. I'd say the first guy looks the best so far. Manuel Riddick has elite strength. Mm, yeah, we're going to go with the first guy. Brian Lewis, welcome to the Bears. Damn, it's unfortunate. But yeah, now we're just gonna keep we're just gonna keep drafting, see if we can find some players we like. Maybe we can find a free safety that looks better and just move them to strong safety if they have a depth trade, that might be the play. JD Monk, twenty two to Utah, great strength. Ooh. I mean he looks okay. C zone coverage D man, but he has B play rec. He's this is a run stopper, right? Yeah, run support. Dorian McGee, it looks okay. I kinda like Dorian McGee. A hit power, B play rec, B tackle, A to C zone coverage. I think he's going to have a dev trade. He's only 21. Let's take him. Let's fucking go. Hit and dev. That's going to be our new starting strong safety. I don't care if the other guy's a higher overall. We're going for the dev trade. We'll make one more pick in the third round. Just see if we can hit on something. I wonder what overall that running back's going to be. There was an 85 overall running back at some point in this rebuild. So maybe we can get like an 80 plus. And we're going to go with Derek Izzo with our last pick. 21 out of Miami. Only solid strength, but he has a lot of A's, a lot of B's, so we're going to go ahead and take him. And he has hit and dev, 86 strength. Perfect. We'll let the CPU take over. We'll look at the draft recap. We'll get into the second to last year of the rebuild. I wonder how long this video is. Ooh, Taylor Leno's an 81 overall. we got to move McGee over to strong safety just so I don't forget. And the rest of the draft was actually pretty good. So we're going to start McGee at safety. He's a lower overall, but he's going to have a dev trait, so he's going to develop faster. So here's the offense going into the second to last year. We added a new backup running back as an 81 overall hidden dev. If he has X-Factor, I'm going to be kind of disappointed that we signed Jonathan Taylor, but the offense looks really good. Defense honestly looks almost better. Let's make sure we start McGee over here at strong safety. But I'll see you guys at the end of the year. Hopefully, we're in the playoffs with a really good record. And we finish year 9, 13-4. We win the division. We have the number one offense in points per game and the number one defense. Let's quickly go over these stats. Caleb Williams led the league in passing yards with 4,500 yards, 48 touchdowns, one interception, 74 completion percentage. This is like the best quarterback season of all time. Jonathan Taylor, 1,400 yards, 18 touchdowns, 4.8 yards per carry. Gabe Ward, 1,300 yards, 17 touchdowns. Oh my god, everybody did so good. 1,100 yards, 10 touchdowns out of a Dunze, 800 yards, 8 touchdowns out of Neighbors. Trevor Bradley was good in his first year. O-line was not great, but I mean, clearly they were good enough. Jermaine Edmonds, 113 tackles, 13 TFLs out of Silver, 11 out of Freeman, 11 out of whatever, 21 and a half sacks out of Chester Silver. I'm telling you, he's the best player of all time. 11 and a half sacks out of Freeman, 10 out of Matt Abuike, three picks out of Jalen Johnson, one out of Collins. We actually didn't get many picks on the year, but that's like the last thing I'm going to complain about. Caleb Williams obviously wins MVP. Like, I don't see how he couldn't. We did not win Coach of the Year, though. NFC Offensive Player of the Year also goes to Caleb Williams. Ward at number four. Jonathan Taylor at number five. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Chester Silver again, obviously. Freeman down here at number eight. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Tracy Goodrich for the Cowboys. We came in fourth with Taylor Leno, our backup running back. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Matt Knowles for the Cowboys. We came in sixth with Dorian McGee. And for these playoffs, we're going to go ahead and sim straight to the Super Bowl. We got the Carolina Panthers in the wild card. We had a way better year than them i mean we're only one overall higher but we have the best offensive defense in the league so really nobody should be able to beat us oh excuse me let's go ahead and send to the super bowl let's see if we're there and we are unfortunately not in the super bowl this year we actually got first rounded by the panthers we lost 32 to 24 it's a little bullshit but it's whatever we want our super bowl i'm honestly content with that but we only have three million now and we're going to have some big names to re-sign probably just because we're paying so many people on this team. I think Matabuike's contract's coming up. Looks like the Falcons win the Super Bowl again. They've won like three Super Bowls already. That is insane. But honestly, even if we don't win another Super Bowl, I built like one of the best teams ever. I drafted probably the best NFL player of all time. No retirements, but... Oh, actually, we did have a couple retirements. But Legereus Sneed finishes a career with the Vikings, retires. Justin Jefferson retires. Quentin Williams finished with the Packers, retired. Christian Watson retires. Josh Jacobs retires. And we lose our kicker and Jalen Johnson. But honestly, 
that many retires with the retirements within our division really can't complain we have negative 31 million so we're not going to be able to bring any of these players that are here back unfortunately we're going to have to try to replace everybody we lose in the draft let's see who we're going to be losing though we're going to lose malik neighbors and gabe ward oh no we're going to lose andrew freeman our tackle we're going to lose everybody okay this is going to be a pretty uh pretty sad final year of the rebuild it's all those restructures man that's why i avoided doing it in the beginning of the rebuild just because uh you know look how far our overall team just dropped we do have seven million so we could sign somebody in free agency but yeah we have a lot of holes that we got to fix now we have a we need to draft another tackle is going to start this year on the o-line we need another receiver really bad and then we need a middle linebacker now we need another d lineman but honestly it could be a lot worse honestly I think I said honestly twice. Let's see if we can get somebody back in free agency. I'll try to restructure some deals real quick and free up as much money as I can. It sucks we lost both of our receivers, though. Dude, there's literally no deals we can restructure. We're kind of fucked. That's like the most we've saved from a restructure is 1.8 million. We're like actually fucked. We have 10 million to sign a free agent. Oh, boy. Oh, I'm so sad we lost Malik Neighbors, dude. We couldn't even tag them because we had no money. That's the worst part. We can actually afford to bring back Matabuike, though, so I guess that's good because he had a really good year for us last year, so we'll bring him back, and then we're going to have to replace everything else in the draft. Okay, if he fucking... All right, there we go. Oh, I guess that's what happens when you go all out, man. When you build this good of a team, you're bound to lose a bunch of players. Kind of makes me think of the 49ers. Like, I wonder what's going to happen to the 49ers when all of their contracts start coming up. Yeah, so I guess let's just hope we can find a good receiver to take in the first round, a good tackle to take in the second round, Middle linebacker's probably least of my concerns, but, you know, it'd still be nice to have one. We're just gonna have to... Oh, fuck. That was bad, dude. I can't believe we lost all those players at once. That's really bad. Please tell me there's a good receiver here in the first round. And we pick all the way at 24. I didn't even really factor that part in. If we were gonna lose all those players, could we have at least won the Super Bowl? That was really frustrating. Damn, and there's no good receivers. Actually, Martin McCall looks pretty good. 21 out of Florida. Elite strength, elite jumping... B spec catch, B release, B catching, B break tackle. He's around two, two to three projection, but we really need this guy, so let's take him now. And he has hidden dev. Please tell me there's a good tackle in the second round. There's actually some good tackles left. Mike Stevens, 23 out of Boston College. Only solid strength. A couple Ds, don't really like to see that. Matthew Robinson has good strength. Honestly, they both look kind of bad. Let's just go with Mike Stevens because he's 6'7", and he has hidden dev, 85 strength. We'll try to get a linebacker here in the third round, and then we'll let the CPU do what they can do. Or maybe we get a corner. We kind of kind of lost a lot. We lost corners, too. I mean, Levi Short doesn't look great, but he does have elite agility and great excel. Let's just take him, honestly. He might have a dev trait. He doesn't. But I think we can get a linebacker easier in the fourth round than we could a corner. Steady calling my phone. And then let's just go with Will Hightower. I'm not going to put too much thought into it. He has a zone. He has elite excel. Probably not going to be a very good overall, but fuck it. We'll let the CPU take over, and we'll get into the final year. McCall's a 74 overall. Stevens is a 72. Short's a 73. The linebacker we took is terrible. But yeah, this is probably the worst the roster has looked since the beginning of the rebuild. But it definitely could look worse. We got a couple rookies on the roster. It's just going to come down if they can play good. Defense honestly still looks really good. If this defense can play as good as it looks on paper, I think we'll have a good year regardless. So let's go ahead and get to the playoffs of the final year, and let's see what happens. And surprisingly enough, we are actually in the playoffs. I can't even tell if we won our division because it doesn't show it. We still have the second best offense in the league and the 18th offense, or whoa, second best defense in the league and 18th offense in points per game. We were really good in yards though on offense. MVP goes to Trevor Lawrence on the Steelers. No Bears. NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Ronald Dunbar for the Giants. No Bears. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Paul Woodley for the Commanders. We came in second place with Chris Braswell, fourth with Chester Silver, and eighth with Adrian Freeman. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Marshall Smith for the Eagles. We came in second with McCall. Why wouldn't we get cucked? Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Chris Thompson. We came in second again. Why wouldn't we get cucked twice? We'll go game by game for these playoffs. Let's send past the wild card against the Giants. They have a better team, but we had a better record. Also, it shows us now we did win the division, but let's get to the divisional. And we actually won. We won by 21 points. And we have another pretty easy game here against the 9-8 and Cardinals. Let's get to the NFC Championship. Can we beat the Cardinals here? And no, we lose 16-10, to unfortunately. So that is going to be the end of this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed. If you're still watching right now, like, thank you so fucking much. Because I can only imagine how long this video is going to be. 
but I'm pretty sure we drafted the best football player of all time in Chester Silver. This is probably my favorite part of the video. Multiple time defensive player of the year, probably already has like 100 plus sacks as a 28 year old. If this video went on longer, this guy would finish his career probably leading all time sacks. But again, thank you so much if you made it this far. If you did, you clearly enjoyed the video, so make sure you leave a like and subscribe. We did only win one Super Bowl, but I think there's a point in time where we built one of the best teams ever. We had we had Roma Dunze, Neighbors, and uh, I think his last name was Ward or something, Gabe Ward, all at once, and they were all insane. We added Jonathan Taylor, and this defense that we built was insane, especially at its peak. We had Jalen Johnson. We had another middle linebacker who was insane. We had this good of a D-line pretty much the whole time, so... Thank you for watching. That's all for this one. Deuces.